Tom drive for the GHSA state title. Friday nights mean high school football in Georgia. And tonight, the drive for the GHSA state title. Presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com brings us to Freedom Field on the campus of Houston County High School as the Lee County Trojans at 4-1 and one in rank number 6 in the 6A classification here in Georgia take on the Houston County Bears at 5-0 and oh and rank number 3. Hello, everybody. I'm Brandon Adams. Happy to be joined alongside recruiting insider Rusty Manziel. And for Lee County traveling to take on Houston County tonight, big challenge awaits them. This is a Houston County team that's averaging 50 points per game on offense, scored 41 last week in a win against Warner Robins. Lee County, though, has the ability to slow them down. How do the Trojans do that? Well, you want to maintain, you want to move the chains. And Lee County luckily loves to run the football. You want to limit the amount of touches, this explosive offense from Houston County. I believe you're going to see Lee Lee County run the ball a lot tonight. And keeping in mind, when Lee County does run it, they are also averaging 40 points per game on offense themselves, so they've been successful doing just that. But success, Houston County's tasted plenty of that. They may be the hottest team in the state here right now at 5-0. and How do they keep that momentum going here this evening? Well, just be who they are right now. You talk to I talked to some people at Warner Robins talking about how explosive they are. They stress you on every play because you got a quarterback and Antoine Hill Jr. who can throw up the length of the field and throw it all over the place. You're going to see one of the top six callers in America in the class of 2025 tonight for Houston County. Pound for pound, Region 1 here in the 6A classification may be as deep as any region in the state. This is going to be one of the best games we'll have for you all season long. And it's two great coaches that make all of that possible. Our Kaylee Manziel is standing by with both of them. Hello here right all now. and welcome to the U.S. Army pregame show. As always, I'm your host Kaylee Manziel and with kickoff coming up soon, it is time for our R.S. Andrews head coaches interview. Today I'm joined by the head coach of Lee, Dean Fabrizio, and the head coach of Houston County Jeremy Edwards coach Fabrizio as you are the visiting coach you will go first you guys had a tough loss to Colquitt County two weeks ago a very talented Colquitt County I have to add how have you rebounded since that loss well, we've done well since then you know we learned a lot from that game we try to play a tough non-region schedule because you know our region is extremely tough and it helps prepare us for that you know our kids came back played a really good game the next week versus Lake Gibson and uh, we had an open week last week and you know we certainly needed it Houston County's got a great team and uh, it's gonna be a great game tonight mm -hmm. and coach Edwards your team had a huge win over Warner Robins last week I know that's a big rivalry for you all how do you get your team dialed in and focused for this week yeah, anytime you play an in-county rival here, you know, it's an emotional game. So uh, playing Warner Robins and, you know, having to bounce back from that in 24 hours, we'll let our guys, you know, enjoy it for 24 hours. But then we got to get ready for Lee County, which is a tall task. So uh, Sunday we hit the ground running and try to get ready for Lee County. Mm -hmm. Coach Brizio, as the away team, I know you've had a chance to talk to your players already. What are you hoping that they gained from their pregame speech with you? What did you want the message to them to be conveyed as? Well, when you play a team as good as Houston County, County. you know they're they're very well coached they've got a lot of great playmakers on both sides of the ball you know we've got to do a good job on our end of playing smart football and playing efficient football across the board because they're so dangerous that you know if you make a mistake they're going to take advantage of it so you know we're just going to tell them hey you've got to go out you got to lock in you got to play one play at a time and uh, have fun enjoy the atmosphere tonight mm -hmm. coach Edwards I have to let you know I have a very special place in my heart for your quarterback Antoine Hill Jr. he was one of the first televised interviews that I did three or four years ago and now he's a mega star. Talk about how you've seen him develop as a player over the last three years. Yeah, I mean, he's he's polished. I mean, he, he approaches every week really with a pro mindset. And so, uh, you know, there, he gets a lot of publicity, obviously, but he puts in the, the time and the work. So every single week, you know, he's putting in the extra time in the film room and meetings, everything he can do to get himself a, a head up on his opponent. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach Edwards and Coach Fabrizio, thank you so much for joining me. I know y'all got a lot to do, so I'm going to let y'all get out there. Guys, make sure to stay tuned because kickoff is coming up soon. Thanks for having us. I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Are you 18 years of age or older? 
become a star. The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office is now hiring for deputy sheriff with a signing bonus up to $4,700. They also have civilian and trades positions available. If you are interested in a career with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office, visit GoGCSO.com to learn more about compensation, incentives, benefits, and areas where you can start your career today. Are you ready to rise to the call? Join GCSO today and become a star. America, come along with our adventure seekers and discover summer with Ford. Join friends Maisa and Leslie on an epic adventure with the capability of the Ford Bronco Sport. Head out with the Stevens family and stay connected with built-in Wi-Fi in the Ford Explorer. Did you know that horse is sweet standing up? Road trip with the Sanchez family and available hands-free highway driving in the Ford F-150. <laughs> Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. The drive for the GHSA state title is presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Transform your future. All right, guys, two, one, and here we go. Happy Friday to everybody who is joining me here at the First Alert Desk. My name is Alan Devlin. I'm an anchor here with Atlanta News First, and it is a pleasure to have you with me this evening. If you see my uh, background here, it's a little bit different today. We're actually making some renovations in our control room. This is a live image every day. It's not just a picture. It's not a freeze frame. It is a live living video of our control room where our producers, our directors, and our engineers work the shows throughout the course of the day. So you can see them right behind me. Where is he? Right here. Working on refurbishing and renovating the actual control room so the lights are on so they can see. So I'm going to be standing in front of the lit control room for the night. But don't worry about that. That is not the reason I am here. We're going to go through our top stories today, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the weather. Cutter Martin's going to be joining me here in just a few moments. We're going to start here at the top with a story that has been pretty controversial from the start. So right now, these boxes, you've seen them, uh, over 100,000 signatures were delivered to Atlanta City Hall a couple of weeks ago in protest of the uh, Public Safety Training Center. So these proponents of Cop City, they call it Cop City, they are trying to get a vote on the ballot in the upcoming November ballot so that the city of Atlanta can vote on whether or not this thing should be built. The city's been pushing back the whole time saying it should be built. The people that don't want it built are saying it shouldn't be built. And so they're trying to reach this middle ground where they have their petitions. You know, they're going to create a petition to get it on the city ballot so people can vote for it. The thing is, um, today the city published all of the signatures from everybody or most of the people that actually voted or at least voted to have it go to a vote and some people are saying that's not you know not the move they don't want that to happen they don't want these people to be have their information out there they believe it should have been redacted so there's been a lot of outcry and pushback on the city's decision which is just the latest installment on what has been a mess since its inception this entire thing with this cop city or this training facility depending on which side you're on it continues to hit roadblock after roadblock so now what you have is the city uh I guess not even being able to put it on the ballot, not even not even being able to vote on it because of legal reasons. It's a mess. But regardless, those petitions right now, all of those signatures are published online. You can see them. Everybody that uh, put their name down in petition of the facility, it has been published. And the proponents, the opponents to the facility aren't too happy about that. Moving along here, we've got Adam Murphy is going to walk us through a senior citizens center who uh, the kitchen actually scored a 25 in their uh, health inspection, recent health inspection, which is growing concerns on what kind of foods being served to the senior citizens who live there. I'm Adam Murphy in Duluth, where the senior living community received a very low health score, 25 points out of 100 in their kitchen. 
Park of Duluth touts itself as exceptional senior living, but their kitchen staff received an exceptionally low health score. As mentioned, they failed with 25 points in a U for unsatisfactory. The inspector snapped photographs of the violations, which show a mold-like substance in the ice machine, dented cans of food, and dirty water leaking on boxes of food in the freezer. In addition, the report noted several food items at unsafe temperatures. Now, management... Lee County strikes the first blow in the game, at least on defense, getting yep. that stop against Houston County. Now you're going to see a change in philosophy. You're going to see a team that wants to run the football. They want to ball control you, and it's going to start with number 32. Yeah, absolutely. That's our starting lineup presented by the Georgia Army National Guard, who's Monty Croma, one of the top running backs in the entire state, let alone in the 2025 class. Weston Bryan, though, also a quarterback starting to come into his own. Also keep your eye on Devin Collier. They call him D1 Collier. Uh, he's a guy that can also be explosive, a little bit of a change of pace from what Chroma provides. The hand goes to Chroma on first down, and he's got room to run. Osonomy Chroma into Houston County territory, now cutting back right. And Chroma on the first play of the game is going to score 63 yards for the touchdown. Well, that's the way to introduce, it. <laughs> introduce yourself. The number two rated running back in the country for his class. Nice blocking up front. Once he gets in the open field, he does the rest. Cuts back right here to finish it off. And I think we can say it. I don't think Coach will get mad. He's about 85% right now. A little bit banged up. So he's got another gear to him. The rumor around Leesburg this week was that he was dealing with a strained calf and yeah. they were concerned about how healthy he would be. I yeah. would say I'm no doctor, but it looks yeah. like he's pretty healthy. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Riker Moy adds the extra point, but how about Osami Kroma swinging for the fences on the first play? 63 yards for a touchdown. We'll be right back. Link your Ingalls Advantage card to your child's school, giving the advantage to those who really need it. That's our pledge to you. Under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Every day, businesses everywhere are asking, Is it possible? With Comcast Business, it is. Is it possible to help keep our online platform safe from cyber threats? Absolutely. Can we provide health care virtually anywhere? We can help with that. Is it possible to use predictive monitoring to address operations issues? We can help with that too. With the advanced connectivity and intelligence of global secure networking from Comcast Business. It's not just possible, it's happening. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. For more than a century, People have been getting in a Ford vehicle and getting out there, strengthening our communities. We believe what you do with your Ford vehicle is what makes it a Ford. Ford assembles more vehicles in America than any other manufacturer because we're all in on America. Now, get up to 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, plus up to 3,000 cash back on select Ford SUVs. And welcome back, everybody. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel here on our drive for the GHSA state title. Uh, obviously, a big announcement made this week. Fun, exciting new things on the horizon here as the brand new Peachtree Sports Network gets ready to debut, starting with our game on October 6th between Cass and Cartersville. We're going to be airing on the brand new Peachtree Sports Network. Now, let me give you an idea how to find this. It's uh, channel 17.2. That's a uh, WPCH alternate station. It's 245 on cable. And, of course, you can still watch it on the Atlanta News First app the way that you always have. But, Rusty, the thing that I love about this is it's more high school sports for oh, people yeah. in Georgia, and you can't get enough of that. Hey, basketball, baseball, this is going to be statewide. This is from Savannah to Thomasville to Dalton to Blairsville. Everybody is going to get a chance to watch the game of the week statewide. Looking forward to next week. Going to make history at Cartersville with a big, another big-time matchup, Cass and Cartersville, next Friday night. Yeah, going to be a lot of fun. And speaking of statewide, the entire state buzzing about what they saw from Usmani Kroma a moment ago. The long touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage. That's our Breda Pest Management scoring summary. Just took them one play, and they are on the scoreboard. 
Moy will kick it off. This is low. It will bounce, and it is returnable. Talib going to get it at the 30-yard line. He goes out of bounds. Brennan, it, it just has that playoff feel. You it know does. what I mean? This game right here means something down the line because this will be seedings in this region one. But you just have that playoff feel, man. A huge crowd, two really good football teams, a lot of players, two teams that are well coached. It just has that that kind of November feel. Yeah, and a lot of our audience is aware of this, but some folks are more you know casual observers of high school football. We have kind of flipped the switch from a calendar standpoint. We've been broadcasting a lot of yes. non-region games, oftentimes teams from different classifications, but we are deep in the heart of region play here no right doubt. now. No doubt. A.J. Hill will hand it off to Talib. Talib finds some room to run. He's going to drag a man to the 35-yard line. Watch how fast they go. Watch how fast they go. That will be on the ball right here. Jeremy Edwards has compared it to the Tennessee offense in terms of the pace in which they want to play, but they may have gone a little too fast right there. An offensive lineman may have jumped off. Full start. Offense. Let's see our game officials here presented by the Georgia Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors Association. Willie White's our referee. Brett Wallace. Chris Mixon's our back judge. Martin Jackson's the side judge. Timothy Hansen's our electronic clock operator. Good veteran group of officials obviously helping keep order here tonight. No easy task with two teams who know each other well playing for a lot when it comes to this tough region one in 6A. Of course, Lee County an easy winner in this series last year. How about A.J. Hill will wow. a shoulder? You don't see that from him a ton. Did not but he know crossed he had the 30-yard line. And he finished and, and turned pissed off right there. I like that. Lowered his shoulder. And that's one thing how his game has developed more athleticism. Look how fast they're going again. You see the numbers on the screen for him a moment ago. It's Talib getting his turn. Big hit there at the 25-yard line. But Talib's still able to fall through, and he got about four that time. Big offensive line. Look how big the offensive line there is for Houston County. Big D line for Lee County as well. Yeah, fun matchup on both sides of the line of scrimmage here tonight. A little bit of Vuvuzela action in the student section here. Fake by Hill. Now throwing to the end zone. Incomplete. Good coverage there. Josh Henry was the intended target. Just about a step beyond his reach. Corey McDowell. Great coverage there. Good pass protection. He's able to step into it. Just look at the tight spiral on that. Yeah. Just throws a little bit too far. Number four might have had a little jersey, but. The thing I love about Hill, I like his size. It's a good big he sees quarterback. Over, he sees, sees over, over the yeah. defense. Stands tall in the yep. pocket. Hard not to notice that. Talib becomes a receiver. Be careful there. That, he was the intended target, but. Alexander Munro, they call him A.J. Munro, the linebacker, just yep. came over. And well, watch, him, watch, him blow, watch him blow it up. See, he presses. See him come up on five. Five's trying to block him. He just runs right through that, throws the timing off. It's a good job. That's, that's formation recognition there by Lee County defense. Munro is senior, 19 tackles coming in tonight, looking to third down here right now. Hill will slow things down. Speaking over to his head coach, Jeremy Edwards. Edwards, a former offensive coordinator at Warner Robins. That was the big rivalry win that Hoko got last week. Hill now rolling left, going to dump it off. That's incomplete. Kale Woodburn, a Cincinnati commit, was the intended target, but that's going to bring up fourth down. Because Fabrizio, he wanted a potential grounding there. He's working at the sideline official. I love the animation with which Dean Fabrizio coaches. Oh, he'll, yeah, he'll give it to you now coaches with everything he's got and I love that so on fourth down right now Houston County as you might expect going to keep the offense apparently on the field so here we go pretty big moment early stages here trailing by a touchdown acting like they want to go for it on fourth they will pressure comes and Hill is going to go down Chase Angry, the linebacker, third sack of the season for him, and this one came at an enormous moment. Nice job there. Lee County dials one up. Running back is unable. The running back's got him, so he steps up, unable. He just runs right through him. 
Got a pass pro as a running back. It was too late once yeah. he saw him. Good job there. Good, good call by Lee County defense, but nice job there by Angry just to run through that shoulder of the running back. Gives us a chance to check in on the team resume here, presented by Smart Local 85. As you see the, uh, yeah, there we go. There's the Lee County resume presented by Smart Local 85. Of course, Dean Fabrizio in his 15th season. Hard to believe it's been that long, but it has been. Uh, an amazing program they've built up here. Obviously, look at, you know, great former players, the likes of Aubrey Solomon and Otis Reese, and they've had a long list of them. Former state championship program there as well. As that's going to be a pass completion, Weston Bryan, his first throw of the game, and Braxton Honer comes away with the completion. I'll give you a quick note on Lee County, too, in light of the resume we just saw. The only school in the top two classifications of Georgia which has been ranked in the top 10 for more than 100 straight weeks. Oh, wow. Now, Buford's been in the top 10 that long, too, but they haven't been in the top two classifications for 100 consecutive weeks as of yet. Oh, wow. So Lee County's got a pretty cool distinction. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Brian drops the snap, and I believe that was a snap that was just dropped. I believe that was in his hands and just dropped, and he had to fall on it. Yeah, he was trying to get rid of it. He was going to try to throw it. They're going to throw it to the running back right here. He just, yeah, he just lost it. So now looking at third down, Troma comes back in as a running back. His only touch of the game was 63 yards for a score on the game's opening drive. Receiver goes in motion. Weston Bryan surveys the scene. He will throw. It's caught. 40-yard line. Braxton Honer there to haul, haul that one in. Yeah, they run crossing routes. They were anticipating man-to-man, -man, but Houston County goes zone, and when he cleared over to the next defender, he was able to make the tackle. So it's short of the first down. That brings up fourth, and that also brings on Riker Moy to punt. punt. Ryan Talib will be the punt returner for Houston County. So the Houston County defense gets a win after the fourth down attempt earlier did not succeed. They get a quick three and out, get a chance uh -oh. to put the football back. But how about this punt by Moy? Takes a real Trojan roll inside the 15. Going to be dropped dead there at the 14. So Lee County successfully flips the field. And we'll see Houston County coming back on offense. But a quick timeout before we get there here on Peachtree TV and streaming on Atlanta News First. Hendrick. Drive now, pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. The Mechanical Trades Institute is an opportunity towards personal financial freedom through hands-on and rewarding work. Our school is completely free and gives apprentices the knowledge and skills required to gain access to a lifelong career path. Apprentices learn pipe fitting, plumbing, mechanical service, and welding. They earn money as they learn and graduate with no student debt. Start a career with the Mechanical Trades Institute and change your financial future. Struggling with food insecurity can feel lonely, yet every community across America is affected by hunger, which is why our Kroger associates work together to rescue nutritious food that would otherwise go to waste in an effort to donate 3 billion meals by 2025. Because we believe everyone should have access to fresh, delicious food. Join the Kroger Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation to defeat hunger and eliminate food waste. The Forum River Center in Rome, Georgia is now open and available for meetings and receptions. We're fully equipped for large conventions, sporting events, weddings, and much more. The Forum is located downtown within walking distance of local restaurants, hotels, and boutique shopping. We offer a variety of meeting spaces, many with beautiful river views. Outdoor venues are available for that special touch. With our adjacent parking deck and a personal concierge on site, your event is sure to be a hit. Find out more at ForumRiverCenter.com. 
The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com Drive for the GHSA State Title is sponsored by Score Atlanta, your source for Georgia high school sports. HendrickCars.com. Get no payments for 90 days at HendrickCars.com. Experience the Hendrick difference. Sports Turf. You bring the vision, we'll bring it to life. The Georgia Army National Guard. The next generation is now. And by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. We are back. Lee County leads Houston County 7-0. Our drive for the GHSA state title presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Hoko going back on offense. It's Talib. That's been the most successful yeah. play call for Houston County thus far this evening. Yeah, got a little high candy with some motion. Just a little inside zone there. And Talib has found a crease there a couple times against Lee County. They go right back, same play. Yeah, Talib on a team that you think of throwing the football a lot. Obviously, A.J. Hill, a prize recruit, three Division I wide receivers. You see the numbers on him this season, but a year ago, he also set a school record with 1,720 yards rushing. So he is a very successful running back. Just recently picked up an offer to UT Chattanooga, so drawing the attention of college scouts as well. Hill will fake the handoff. Now he's going to crank it up, throw deep again. Got a guy there, but it's good coverage by Ja'Cory White. The junior to break it up. Lost his helmet. Antoine Hill left that one a little bit underthrown. You want to throw that one past the defender. And his wide receiver comes back, does a good job there playing defensive back, really. See him knock that ball out. Yeah, Kale Woodburn was the end. Watch Woodburn target. come back in at the end right here, knock it out of his hand. Helped his quarterback out right there. 91, 91 here in the white for Lee County. That's Leroy Jackson, his defensive lineman. You see him right in the middle. Oh, nice throw. Hill's going to hit Johnson, and he's going to be on the move. Midfield, still on his feet, shakes off a tackler, swings free again, finally be drug out of bounds, but Ricky Johnson did not want to go down, and he moves the chains for Houston County. RPO, you see him whip that thing in that tight window right there. Big time throw. Big time throw there. Johnson does a lot after the catch as well. Johnson's a Stanford commit, so that's a big-time player and the leading receiver for this team this year. You see those numbers there, including nine touchdowns. Back to Talib. So we'll talk about 91. Leroy Jackson just recently picked up. You see him there in the middle fixing shoulder pad. Just recently picked up a North Carolina Good offer. for him. North Carolina defensive line coach is down on the sideline tonight watching him. So a lot of players in this game. Of course, Lee County, a history of putting oh big offense of the defensive linemen. All, in the major Aubrey college. Solomon, all of that crew. There's Talib again. Boy, they found success in the middle with him, and he plows forward to the 38. Got about six that time. Lee County made news, I guess, a couple weeks ago. Former alumni Luke Bryan, Lionel Richie, and Katie Perry just roll up in the front office, knock on the door. How about that? That is a really I mean, solid. You think that would have been a nice day to be at school? That's a, <laughs> a, a fun thing right there. First down now after the Talib run. Lee County showing you pressure defensively. Here they come. Hill shakes free of it for now. Wrecks some traffic now throwing, but just trying to get rid of See, it. See, I love that. He, he avoided a negative play. First of all, he beats the sack by turning around. Then the experience of him, Brandon, a lot of times the young quarterback wants to force something. He just throws it away. Watch him spin here, get out. Takes a look, directs a little traffic. It's not there. Throw it away and live for another down. Yeah. Huge play by uh, Antoine Hill there. Good description, Rusty, of a smart play by Hill. Now looking at second 10. Ball sits at the 38-yard line. Talib will go in motion. Here comes Lee County again. Talib gets the dump off. Got the block that he needed. Gets another one still on his feet, 30-yard line. Nice play call. They caught Lee County. Start to see a little bit. Lee County is coming after them, Brandon. You see them blitz right here. He gets rid of the ball out in space. It's two on two. And no one touches him for about 12 yards. First down. I'm going to say still third down here. Ah, that was first. Talib. He may have knocked him for a first down. Yeah, he may have gone forward and gotten that. They're going to stay still a little bit short here. So fourth and one now. They You're going to do a direct wild, snap. Wild, wildcat. Yeah, Wildcat direct snap straight ahead, and that will move the chains. 
So Houston kind of shakes things up offensively. Yeah, they take Hill out and put 29 in. Gavin at Wildcat. Purpose uh, at the running back spot as a Wildcat quarterback, and he plows straight ahead and gets the first down. Yeah, you bring a tight end in. He just snaps the ball. Good job there by moving bodies by the Houston County offensive line. First down. Hill back in at quarterback. He'll hand the ball off to Taleb. And Leroy Jackson, who Rusty was telling you about a moment ago, there to make that tackle. I'll tell you one thing. Lee County is not sitting back. They are coming after Hill. They are coming after him. About to go under four minutes in our first quarter. Bears looking for their first points of the game. Hill got time. Now will take off running. Going to go out of bounds around the 15 yard line. Got about nine that time. I'll tell you what, this is an element of his game that I have not seen. Good job by Talib just to pick him up enough. Angry came again, but that right there will make you drive you nuts as a defensive coordinator. Coming quickly here on third down. Hand off to Talib straight ahead, but there's a flag down. Yep, got a legal procedure. Yep. That one looks like it's coming back. Yep. We got the train whistle, but probably yeah, yeah. prematurely. Yeah, just, just practice. Got a false start offense. False start offense. Yeah, that's a movement there. Yeah, not only does that negate the touchdown, it also makes the third down play coming up a lot tougher, too. I don't know about that. I didn't see it. I didn't see at, it. But... At real time there. Mm. I don't know if they were looking at a wide receiver that wasn't set. To me, hard, hard, hard to see that at first blush. Let me yeah. just say it that way. He threw it quickly. You see Ola on top of Warner Robbins right now in our Breda Pest Management score ticker. That's another big reaching game in, in Class 5A classification. All right, now looking at third down. See if they come. Like a third and six. They're coming. Hill direct snap. He's going to take it, and he's got room to go into the end zone for a touchdown. A.J. Hill, second rushing touchdown of the season. Brandon, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know he had this in him. Now, you want to talk about going to another level? You talking about a 6'5 kid that can move? What a great read. He picks up the high, anger. He comes off again. That's a great job by A.J. Hill. And to back up your point, from a stat standpoint, he's hardly rushed the ball at all this year. I'm telling you. I, I, has I, not run the ball really at all. I've watched him a lot. Benji Malcolm's extra point is good. Is this a, a, a wrinkle because you're playing a good Lee County team and yeah, you need the extra you, element you of the offense? Out. Yeah, you turn your athleticism loose right here. And that, I, I guarantee you, Lee County's coming at him thinking he can't move out of the park. Let me give a shout out to our friends at Breda Pass Manager here for a moment because in Georgia, we got flying squirrels. And when you got these southern flying squirrels getting in your attic and doing all that kind of stuff, you don't want to mess around with that. You want to trust the experts who've been doing stuff like this since 1975. It's Breda Pass Manager. Find them online, BredaPest.com. That's B R E D A, BredaPest.com. Breda Pass Manager, a big part of what we do here on Georgia High School football each and every Friday night. Got on one. Our drive the GHSA state title. Got one brewing. Mary Persons 28, Prince Avenue 7. Keep your eye on the that. Second quarter. Keep your eye on that for sure. This is a Prince Avenue team that's it's went down to Florida last week and beat a really good Pensacola Christian. They're playing a level far above their you know, single no A classification. You see our Breda Pest Management scoring summary, 13 plays, 86 yards. A.J. Hill calling his own number for the touchdown. Benji Malcolm looks like he might want to try short kick here. It will be returnable. Running 20 yard line, trying to find some room on the left side. Braxton Honer gets pretty good field position up to the 42. So that's a good spot there for Lee County. And as Rusty was sharing those scores, we're watching them all night long. Yep. Our Breda Pest Management uh, uh, score ticker rolling throughout the evening here including Oconee County on top of a very good Hebron Christian team. Trying to bounce back. Oconee County's been playing a really tough schedule. Looking forward to watching uh, for scores at Cartersville Calhoun tonight. Big one. I think Newton Grayson's a really interesting game. Got a great matchup down in the uh, Division II uh, of, of, of single A right now. Walton North Paulden. Uh, that game uh, obviously close here at the moment. 
first time I've seen this formation. Three by one, three to bottom. Weston Bryan is your quarterback for Lee County. Going to hand to Chroma. Chroma cut back left. Here he goes again. Osmani Chroma. Second carry of the night, and it's going to be a result quite similar to the first. He's inside the 10 yard line. Picked up 50 like it was nothing. Formation, man. They spread them out. Great block right there by 63 for Lee County. Angel Fosto. Yep. Great block by 63. Left guard getting on that backer and open it up. In the red zone, presented by Georgia Construction Chroma again. Talk about the change of direction. I just love the way that he changes direction yeah. while he's running. Same play. 63 pulled again. Yeah, this is a Lee County offensive line that Dean Fabrizio told us he takes pride in being physical. And of course, had a huge game a year ago against Houston County. Five total touchdowns in that game. Romo's going to come out and get himself a little bit of a spell here right now, and that's going to bring in Devin Collier. He's a Georgia Southern commit. Look so you're talking formation. about a Division One level athlete. Formation. So they're going to count numbers, look to the line, they call a penalty on that. We got a timeout. Now White and Carlson White. I hadn't heard that one in a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Encroachment typically a defensive penalty. <laughs> I'm, uh, so the only way to me is the referee tells you to back up and you don't. Yeah, it could be. Could be. It was a little bit of an unorthodox formation, and you were kind of on that to begin with. Yeah, you saw the trips all the way to the boundary. Some changes here for Lee County. You see Weston Bryan. I love the mustaches were back. Jeremy Edwards uh, had an interesting point about Bryan. He says he kind of looks like Tim Tebow to him, kind of reminds yeah, you of a Tim guy. Tebow yeah. style player. Yep. The big, you know, you know, kind of thick upper body quarterback. The muscled up dude for a high school quarterback. I want you to look, look at the crowd. Yeah. I mean, that is a standing room only. This atmosphere, I would say, rivals anything we've been a part of. Certainly I this season, if not is. since you and I have been doing this together. That. I mean, people are sitting. There's no seats left. Yeah, packed on the hill because it's standing room only. Sitting on the hill. You know, uh, as large a student section I think we've had for any of the games we've done. It looks like Missouri. Yeah, it does look like Missouri. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, if we expect to see Davis that's, Winnie running, running down, touching a rock somewhere. For the for the TV, hurts the gate crowd. Yeah, listen, that, that's, that's, uh, yeah tough tough look for anybody yeah. who might say that yeah. because uh, I don't believe you're going to find anybody else in Warner Robins to come out and see this one tonight. And it's kind of fun for us. Nobody cares about this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Our position tonight where we're sitting, we're on the visitor side yes. looking across to the home Correct. side. Yep. Um, it does take a little second to get used to that because you're kind of yes. used to sort of seeing things a certain way. But uh, what an amazing Georgia. look. Middle Georgia. Yeah, for us at this wonderful scene here in Middle Georgia tonight. And by the way, coming up in a couple of weeks, we're going to get a chance to induct a brand new class. Yeah, a nice little wave out of the press box there. Brand new class in the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame, including the former Brookwood Bronco and the Georgia Bulldog, Rennie great, Curran, one of our favorites. Dude. I know you like him as well oh, as I do. Great guy. And uh, happy to see him representing his Brookwood team. And, of course, uh, the, uh, the great legacy of Dave football Hunter. there, Dave Hunter, and yep. great legacy there at Brookwood High School. Pistol formation. Brian going to hand to Chroma. Chroma again. Going to drag good. people over. Ball came out. Ball is free. Still being fought for in the end zone. It's up for grabs. No signal yet, right? Yeah, touchdown. 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 And, and I, I'd be interested in see the replay, the replay here. Yeah, did Chroma it, cross the plane? That's going to be the question. It looks like he reaches at the end. First of all, great job of running through arm tackles and watch him keep his legs moving. Watch right here as he st extends his arm. Yeah, he calls That's a touchdown. That. He calls the. That's his, yeah. It's it's a Lee yep. County touchdown, no matter what. But from a stat standpoint, that's yes. also Chroma's touchdown yep. too. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, He's been good tonight. Hey, hey, listen now. He's ranked number two in the country. I talked to the On3.com national director of scouting who does the stars, Charles Power, tonight before. He said, Rusty, I watched the Calker County game, and he we, played well. We got well a touchdown. Ball crossed across the goal line before the, before the runner went down. Yeah. 
Yeah, so they're so even by rule here, they're saying that's the Cromont he's touchdown, got, which is the right it. call. Correct. Uh, and nice clarification by the officials. Yeah, he earned that one. Riker Moy going to come on try the extra point once again. Yeah, keep in mind the touchdown set up by the 50-plus yard run that Cromont had on that same drive. And Moy now two for two on the night. PATs 25 for 25 on the season. We thought we were going to see some 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 explosion. We saw it have a running back, and we've seen the quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. You got a lot of fun offenses here. Houston County averaging 50 points per game coming in. Lee County 40 of its own. They have different styles, but they're doing it very well. And speaking of doing things well, Falcons off to a nice start here this season, too. And don't forget, you can have limited season ticket inventory available for your Atlanta Falcons right now. And you can select your seat today at AtlantaFalcons.com slash tickets. I love this comparison. What is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like bone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. I love the comparison, Charles Power, on his own 3.com profile. He compares Kusman to Marcus Lattimore. Got to, it kind of, kind of like reminds it. you like that. You I know? like I it. I like that comparison. Short kick this time by Moy. Going to be fielded and hit right away. It's good field position for Houston County, but a price was paid because of a big hit on special teams by Corey McDowell. Yeah, both teams have been physical in kickoffs. 21 points in the first quarter. This is, this is going to be one of those games, Brandon. We got our money's worth tonight. Yeah, we absolutely are. And we'll see how Lee County added to its scoring total there a moment ago. Second touchdown of the night for Usmani Chroma. Uh, of course, three plays, 60 yards, minute 27 on the clock. Chroma adds his second score and really the sum total of almost every piece of offense on that drive. We will now see how Houston County can respond. A timeout here. They're going to take a timeout, though. Pre-game, Coach Fabrizio comes up to me, and I said, is he going to play? He goes, Rusty, he's about 80%. And I said, he's playing. He goes, oh, yeah, 80% from him is about 100% better than a lot of people. And I, I love that comparison. Uh, that is so, Chroma is 80%, and, and I'd hate to see 100 tonight. While I have a moment, let me remind you about some fun things coming to George's Rome. How about River Jam returning to the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds October 21st through the 22nd. You can come jam with your favorites, including headliner Spark of a Column. Wow, Bailey Zimmerman, Laney Wilson. How about this? I also enjoy performances by Tracy Lawrence, Chase Matthew, John Langston, and more. Plan your fun and get event details at RomeEvents.org. That's RomeEvents.org. Talk about a great collection of... Hey, now, listen, I was there that day. That was Luke Combs. And you want to talk about some hydration in Floyd County now. How about that? Uh, you got no problem with that great lineup. Parker yeah, McCollum, great TL going to yeah, be yeah. there. That's, yeah. a, that's a good time. Great. They do a great job of that. City of Rome puts it on. Good friend of mine, Jay Shell, is involved with that. They do a really good job to bring that level of talent to Northwest Georgia. You know, some VIP passes maybe? I've got some. <laughs> I've got some. See if, I can, see if I can squeeze this in there for a little afternoon. Minute 36 left in our first quarter. A.J. Hill will throw, pass complete, and nice move to turn that into something by Cale Woodburn. Woodburn going to move the chains again. He caught it behind the line of scrimmage, and for a moment it looked like he might be trapped there, but he shook free, and nice job. I love how he gets north-south really quick. A.J. Hill gets that ball out of his hands, and they're up the field on the line again, ready to go. Woodburn. As you see, Talib getting a chance to carry. The point I was going to make is, is Woodburn was really the leading receiver a year ago. Yes. He's been kind of more Ricky Johnson this year. Yep. But interesting tonight, we have seen Woodburn targeted a lot more than we've seen Johnson targeted. Yeah, so far. Probably got a lot of attention. You see this at the bottom of the field on number one. You see a safety over the top four. Yeah. So there's, that could they're, be, they're could doing be, some bracketing on him as well. Could very well be the case. Parkview on top of South Gwinnett right now, 20 to nothing. Battle of former state champs Buford on top of Collins Hill there as well as the Wolves begin region play. Dump off pass. That's Johnson getting involved. And he's not going to go anywhere. Good job by Lee County, who, as Rusty said, that they've kind of got their eyes on him and had him corralled. Yeah, I'm telling you now, Lee County's fast. You're going to see they have a little more success, I think, going north and south with them instead of trying to go sideline to sideline because Lee County is so fast across the board. 
See Tion Garman there, one of the guys in on that. 35 tackles coming into tonight, so he's already had a good year. Clock ticking. We're 25 seconds in our quarter. Hill, dump off again, and here we go. Wow. Woodburn turns on the Jets, and he's gone. Did I tell you about getting north-south in a hurry? 49 yards on the score. Watch the arm angle of A.J. Hill to get this ball off. This is He shows you another weapon in his arsenal. Watch him side on this ball around this defender. Look at that. Great block and on the edge, and he's gone. I mean, he turned it on. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year for Woodburn. We're still in the first quarter. Folks, buckle your seatbelt. This is going to be a fun <laughs> one tonight. Ooh, are we, I mean, you're going to watch it. The sun come up at Waffle House around six. Hey, you never know. <laughs> I may just head straight to here from here to Auburn. <laughs> And what I love about this, both these teams are doing it exactly the way you thought they would. Correct. Lee County on the ground, Houston County through the air. And speaking of which, let's check on check in on the Houston County resume presented by Smart Local 85. Jeremy Edwards, very successful in his first year last season. Challenging situation, took the job in January, which means, you know, that's right around the time his previous employer, Warner Robins, was playing for state championship. So he came in quickly, got set up, settled in here, had a great run through his first year, and now set up for a lot of success here in year two and you look at guys like Jake Fromm who played in this program I'll give you another one Trey Hill yeah former Georgia center playing with the Bengals now one of the things that Jeremy Edwards said upon taking this job was is you could always tell that Houston County had talent he said one of the jobs I wanted to do was instill a level of confidence in them to have them believe that really anything was possible here and I'd say they're believers right now he also inserted this offense and he also had a quarterback that can run it and he's done a really good job of getting these guys to adapt to this offense. Scoring summary brought to you by Breda Pass Manager. Short kick will go out of bounds. Smart to let it do so by the up man for Lee County. Yeah, Edwards brought really two of his best friends with him here as kind of his co-coordinators, yeah. offensive and defensive coordinators. And, you know, he said you always kind of had your eye on this job because he actually lived in this district and, you know, had always kind of knew if this job became available, it'd be a hard thing to say no to. Yeah. One of the things you'll see when you see a lot of these Houston County fans, including Edwards himself, the Highway 96 T-shirt. It's kind of a little oh, bit of yeah. a branding idea. That's the road. Yo, free kick school. infraction. Black. <laughs> I feel you. I've been there. Why? Why? Why the set to the penalty? The ball be first down on the 37-yard line. Great job there, description. Yeah. Making sure we got all the uh, official particulars there on that. So that puts Lee County back on offense again. Weston Bryan at quarterback with the ball resting at the 37 after the kick out of bounds. Big, heavy front. A chance to see Collier carry the ball. And you talk about a rugby scrum for Collier. They call him D1 Collier, one of my D1, favorite nicknames. D1 Devin, Collier. D1 Collier. Uh, I like the nickname. He's a Georgia Southern commit. And that's going to bring our first quarter to a close. And there were fireworks on both sides, perhaps foreshadowing a lot of fun still to come. So we'll take a quick timeout and come back and show you the second quarter right after this. Every day, businesses everywhere are asking, Is it possible? With Comcast Business, it is. Is it possible to help keep our online platform safe from cyber threats? Absolutely. Can we provide healthcare virtually anywhere? We can help with that. Is it possible to use predictive monitoring to address operations issues? We can help with that too. With the advanced connectivity and intelligence of global secure networking from Comcast Business. It's not just possible, it's happening. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six-piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. 
This summer is the best time ever to own a Jeep Grand Cherokee from Ed Voiles Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Right now, Ed Voiles has over 200 brand new Jeeps on the ground for you to choose from. And right now, during the Jeep Adventure Days, you can take as much as $12,000 off on your new Jeep. That's right, up to $12,000 off. This month, all the 2023 Jeeps must go. So right now at Ed Voiles, you will see nothing but our lowest possible price. Only at Ed Voiles Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Cop Parkway, Marietta. At Ingalls, we're proud to partner with Area Athletics, from Little League to the pros, college tournaments to high school heroes, it's all in the bag. He could go all the way! Yeah! Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. All right, 14-14 game, heading to the second quarter. I'm here with Lee County Head Coach Dean Fabrizio. Offense has the ball now. What's impressed you so far from the group? What do you expect in the second quarter? Well, we've done a real good job running the ball on offense. Obviously, we've hit a couple of big runs on them. Uh, defensively, they've hit us on a couple of big plays, but, you know, that's what they do. And uh, so we've got to do a better job getting those, getting some things corrected coverage-wise and doing a better job tackling. But, you know, it's a heck of a ball game like we expected. Awesome. Appreciate the time, Coach. Good luck in the second quarter, and we'll see you in the second. All right, thank you, Craig Sager Jr., and great job there by Dean Fabrizio, the Lee County coach. Kind of him to stop by and spend a minute with us and sharing some of his thoughts here in the midst of what has been a really, really ooh, oh big hit goodness. right there. Ooh. I mean, I'm talking about lumber mm. being laid by Jordan Davis. Great name for a defensive line, by the way. Speaking of that, it kind of looks like Jalen Carter the other night. The defensive line trailing back down the field. So third down now coming up after the big hit by Davis. Ooh. Great hustle there by Davis. Looking at about five for the first down, still needed. If they get Chroma here. Brian surveying the scene. Chroma is the tailback. He's got a fullback in front of him, or really kind of off like an H back almost. Man goes in motion. Hand goes to Chroma. Chroma is he gonna move the pile? I oh thought gosh. he was stopped. I thought he was stopping. He moved the pile all the way to the 50. And you get the fresh set of downs for Lee County. He's shown you the speed. He's shown you the elusiveness. And he showed you the power right there. Halftime score, Mary Persons 35, Prince 21. What a game that is. Man. Louisville running back commit, Duke Watson having a big night. Mary Persons, another one of these great teams in the central Georgia. A lot of history. Yeah, part of the state. That's the hand after. Collier. Yeah, that's Collier that time. Good change of pace. Especially if they, it'll be interesting to see how many carries they think they can get. I think they're limiting him. Yeah, definitely. My goodness, every time he gets it, he goes 10, 12, 40. <laughs> you got to take him I mean, out gotta, after every carry because he's take getting so many yards. Yeah. Collier goes in motion, gets stacked as a receiver on the left side. Brian will throw. That pass is incomplete. Target had a, tep, had a step on it, but just couldn't quite hold on. Darius Patterson had the coverage. Nice job by Patterson. I tell you what, man, I have been impressed with both of these teams. I have been, too. They're, this has been a sharply played game. We're, 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 we're primarily in North Georgia, so we the Langston Hughes, the Gainesville, the Maris, the Rome, and all these, and Douglas County by 6A. But you want to start talking about these two teams and, and, and throw Thomas County Central in there? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's Ooh, like is Thomas County Central is another top five ranked team in this same region. I want to tell you right now, pound for pound, 6A, I believe, is much deeper than it was I, a year I, ago. I, oh, no question. No question. Third down, uh, Lee County going to call a timeout. The Houston County sideline was really getting into that. The crowd was really getting into that. And then Lee County going to take a timeout to talk about things. Interesting wrinkle. They were going to have Collier and Chroma both in the game together. Yeah, I mean, a lot of situations, Rusty, you would have a matchup like this. And while coaches don't admit this, we can look at regions and say, oh, so-and-so versus so-and-so, sure, that's the sure. region. With Thomas County Central sitting no, in this no. region, you can't do that. No, they are no. that is just as talented a team as, as either of these two are, I would say. Wanted to say one thing, touch on the Braves. Ronald Acuna. Amazing. 40 season. 70. Like Amazing that, that season. I don't think people have really digested that yet. 
yeah, getting a chance to get his 70th steal this week. Uh, last night, Matt Olson sets a franchise record most RBIs. How about that, Parkview? Uh, yeah, former Parkview Panther. You know, they're proud of that. They're the Big Orange Jungle. They have secured home field advantage throughout the playoff. It's a fun time to be a sports fan in Georgia. We've had some of my happiest sporting memories of my life it's taking place in the last couple amazing. of years. We're about to enter that great part of the fall. Oh, yeah. We're sat Friday, Saturday, and during the week, baseball means something. And you sleep Thanksgiving. No doubt. <laughs> Between high school football on Fridays, college football on Saturdays, and baseball the rest of the time, you sleep around Thanksgiving. All right, big third down here coming up. Brian going to have to hurry. Shakes free of a pass rusher now. Dumps it off. Be careful here, but it's going to be caught. Oh, man. How about that? The 30-yard line. Jaden Upshaw. That's a freshman who hauls that in. How did they not sack him right there? You're going to see 99. Watch Nate Langham get loose right here. Holds on to it a little bit. Watch 99. Man, he just rolls out of that. Eyes down the field and just flips it up perfectly to his freshman wide receiver. Now, remember, Jeremy Edwards, the Hoko coach, said he reminds me of Tim Tebow. Not, you know, future Heisman Trophy winner necessarily, but just the way that he plays. That strong upper body allows him to shake free of that pass rusher. Nice move by and Here Collier. we go. Yeah, Collier showing his athletic ability and elusiveness. He's down to the 25. He picks up five. I think we had two Houston County players hit each other. Unfortunately, they're, uh -oh. they're both down. I think it just kind of ran into each other on that tackle. They both get up, thank goodness. But that, watch 10 and 21 right here at the end collide. Mm. Hate to see that, but they both get up. All right, looking at second six now. They call timeout Houston County, and that may be, let's let our guys slow down, and let's also check on our two defenders. Yeah. And, you know, you talked to Jeremy Edwards about the trade-off. When you play as fast as they like to play on offense, what that does to your defense, he says, hey, in order to be able to play this way, you have to have big-time buy-in from your defensive coaches because you can't really sugarcoat this. There are some challenges associated with that. Challenges yeah. when you when you, when you you play fast, you're going to put your defense back out there. Right. Now, the Houston County defense has responded to it all year long, but there are some challenges with that. Let's see our 2023 Georgia Elite Classic Recruiting Report presented by Dog Nation. Rusty, a lot of recruits in this game. No doubt, but Antoine Hill, the quarterback for Houston County, he has played up in Rome twice. And I kept telling people, if you want to go watch a future superstar, yep. come watch this kid play in December. And uh, just really enjoyed meeting him. Kay like Kaylee said, she interviewed him as a as a 14-year-old freshman and just a really, really good kid. Great family, and he's going to be a superstar on Saturdays. Seems like talking to Jeremy Edwards this week, you know, when the season gets done, that kind of off season, that's when the recruiting process in terms yes. of finalists and decisions, yeah. that's when that could be coming from Hill. Here's Brian, the handoff to Collier. Collier, you're looking for that block. Going to go wide right to be able to get it and go out of bounds around the 20. And he's going to be, I think, about a yard short. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. No, first down yardage. First down yardage. Dealing with Chroma and dealing with Collier and Chroma. That's a major one-two punch. The Chroma back in the game. Now keep in mind, one of the things that he's added to his repertoire this year has become a very effective formation. Pass catch. Formation. But right now it's three receivers off the right. The handoff to Chroma. Chroma dances on his feet. 14-yard line. Got an easy six. When they go to that trips, they've been going to him because it takes numbers out of the box. So tell me how you defend that because you can't leave three receivers unguarded, but you also can you gotta have a slight box. You've got to put two out there, and you got to take your third defender, and he's got to be halfway between the, the, the last tackle and that wide. See, there's two out there. There's got to be one off the tackle. It's going to be a keep by Brian. He faked the handoff to Chroma. He spins forward down to the eight. That's six more, and that's a first down again. That's going to be first and goal. Now, his ability to run the ball stretches you, too. In the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com, by the way, as well. Brian handed to Cromont this time. Cromont to the five, and there you go. Red zone, GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Yeah, they go to that tree. He's tapping out there. He's tired. Probably hadn't practiced a lot this week. 
Yeah, how, how much can you, with a running back like this, who's, I mean, he was playing a lot as a freshman, so he's sure. played a lot of high school football. How much can you reasonably limit him in practice and still feel okay on a Friday well, night? He's a gamer. I yeah. mean, it's like Coach said, but it's the, it's the getting the work during the week, getting lathered up. Brian, the handoff straight ahead, and that's a touchdown. Braxton Honer gets the carry, and he gets the score, and Lee County is back on top. Just moving bodies. Collier with a great block there. And everybody's getting a turn right now. Boy, how much do you love to see a guy like Collier, who's had success in the drive, become the lead blocker oh, yeah. right there? Oh, yeah. Riker Moy, third PAT of the night, is good. And Lee County's got the lead. And this game is fun. Back and forth, both these teams go. Coco gets a response coming up right after this. Good to have you with us. Freedom Field, Warner Robins, Georgia. Petrie TV, streaming in Atlanta News First. Hey, does it matter if this leaks? It don't matter to me. Can't see it from my house. Illegal use of hands and proper training. GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com has 14 different highly skilled trades with tuition free training in our certified apprenticeship programs to train you the right way. Find your career at GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. The Georgia Sheet Metal JETC equips apprentices with the knowledge and skills required to start a rewarding career in the sheet metal industry with programs in HVAC, industrial welding, and testing, adjusting, and balancing. Training is 100% free and allows apprentices to earn as they learn. Journeymen graduate with no student debt and have the potential to earn more than most college graduates. Visit our website to learn more about this opportunity at careersinsheetmetal.com. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really of an eye so many tomorrows can disappear buckle up for your future every trip every time a message from the governor's office of highway safety all right welcome back everybody lee county on top 21 to 14. big scoring drive a moment ago capped off by a touchdown by braxton honer and you see the uh, Trojans offense learning more about what they saw. 425 taking off the clock. Of course, that scoring summary brought to you by Breda Pass Management. Traveling up from Leesburg, Georgia. 4-1 and one on the season. The only blemish, a loss to a nationally ranked Caulfield County team. Room to return here. That's uh -oh. Talib. Uh -oh. Talib's going to make the kicker miss, and he's going to be on his feet. But look at the all oh, ball oh, came free. Job. And it's up for grabs. It's still bouncing. Who's going to fall on it? I think Houston County may have gotten it. They did. Wow. Talib made the kicker miss, and he was heading for pay dirt. I want you to watch Corey McDowell from Lee County. Not only does he track him down, but watch him punch it with his right arm right here. Watch this. Watch this. Perfect. Perfect. Is that teach tape? That is perfect. Is that teach tape? Just could not recover it, but that is absolutely what you do the drills on Tuesday and Wednesday to punch that ball out. And man, you just feel for Lee County because they did what you're supposed to do, and Houston County ends up at that scrum with the ball. We're in the red zone presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. And there is nothing crazier than that funny shaped ball just bouncing yeah, all no over doubt. the place like that. No doubt. And both teams are holding their breath, but who's going to come up with it? Going to be a fake to Talib, then a pitch right, and then running back to the 10, out of bounds at the 5. And a, fl a flag also came in, too. Yep. So it's Cale Woodburn who gets the ca the he carry on the, on the sweet play. He's been touching the football a lot tonight. He's got some juice to him now. I'm telling you, I know Ricky Johnson gets a lot of publicity, but... Kel Woodburn has some speed to him and some size as well. I like the design of that play, too. Yeah. 
holding. We got holding. Black. Can you? Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. So we've had total chaos in the last couple of minutes. Yeah. You got the holding on this. Yeah, right there. See that? See that jersey? Yeah, you get that hand right on the outside there. there. So it was a fake to Talib and then the pitch to Woodburn. Yeah, a little, little reverse. Let's look at Ricky Johnson up here on the far left right now. They have not gotten the ball to him as much tonight as he's been getting it all year long. Woodburn also, you just saw him go in motion across your screen there. There'll be a hand. You know, Hill's got it. Look in the direction. Now throwing end zone. Pass caught at the goal line and in for a score. Gavin Kerpus. Second touchdown of the season. Love that play, man, by Hill. Doesn't panic. Allows, allows his receiver to come across the field. C29 at tight end. He has to come all the way across the field. Watch Hill keep his eyes down. Flick of the wrist. Nice job. Touchdown, Houston County. Well designed play. And with Kerpus scoring, and Malcolm's going to try the extra point here, but we'll remind folks that not only is Lee County dealing with a little bit of a you know banged up situation, Houston County's got a key player not playing at all tonight. Ryan Mackey, very good tight yes. end, broken yes. ankle. Mm. He's out for the game and perhaps out for the season, I guess. So while Houston County likes what it has at tight end without him, that's a big loss. Uh, Mackey not able to play. He's had a good season here thus far. We'll also take a look at the team schedule here presented by Personal Touch Lawn Care. And, you know, as a lead into being on television, you can't do much more than what Houston County did last week. Beating a, a local rival like Warner Robins. Huge game. Emphatic fashion, 41-7. People know Jeremy Edwards, the head coach here at Houston County. Now that's the former offensive coordinator at Warner Robins. Um, ironically, the guy that he worked for there, Marquise Westbrook, now coach of Peach County just down the road here too. But that sets up Hoko for what they're going to do here in the region. Northside next week, and then Thomas County Central. You've got three weeks in a row of Lee County, Northside, and Thomas County Central. And you got Lee County and Thomas County Central at home. Yeah, so talk about got to win one. <laughs> this you got to have this year. And of course, at the end of the season, veterans. That's the team that also shares this field. You'll see the Warhawks insignia on the one of the end zones. That's because veterans shares this field with uh, Houston County, and they'll conclude the season by playing each other. And obviously, Tiff County, the other team in this region. Some interesting developments there at Tifton this week. A lot of folks are kind of following and Man. seeing what happens next there. Scoring summary: two plays, ten yards. Kerpus with the uh, touchdown, and that's presented by Breda Pass Management. We are 21-21, and this one's fun. Yeah, we're going to have a – this is going to be one of those 50-50, I have a feeling. By the way, I mentioned uh, Tiff County and kind of a tumultuous week, but they're winning right now. I just saw now. that. Yeah, they're yeah. winning right now. Sometimes things like that, you get a team and just the, the focus just gets tighter. On the kicking team. Don't see that much. No, you got to be careful here, too. You back them up, and it creates a situation where, you know, Collier, one of these guys, has a chance to return this. He is the deep man back. They're going to try to stay away from him, though. Fair catch called for there at 32. <laughs> he changed his he's mind. Like, he's like, you're not allowed to do that. He's like, you didn't see me? Nobody saw that. <laughs> That's actually a penalty. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If you call fair yeah. catch and then run, I hate to say yeah. that to Jordan Houston, but yeah. you're not allowed to do that. It's a lot to remember when the ball is in the air. I mean, if you think about it, you're looking up while people are, you know, very good athletes are running as fast towards you as they possibly can. Let me can. tell you something. You, that ball seems like it's in the air for 10 minutes. <laughs> it does. So We got a personal foul, receiving team. Gave those yards right back. So it's a personal foul to, I thought it was just a delay of game. First, first down on the 20 yard line. Okay, well, there you go. All right, so Lee County going to go back on offense. 21 21. Now, they've got seven minutes. If they don't have. They don't have to change anything about the way they've been operating all night long. And in the case of Chroma, it could be one touch and gone anyway. 
He gets the handoff. Two touchdowns already tonight. Looking for a block. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Crossing the 30-yard line up to the 32. I love the comparison to Marcus Lattimore. I do, too. Love it. I had a chance to see Lattimore play in high school. They came down to Georgia. I saw saw him play North Gwinnett. That's where I saw him, I believe, yep. Mikey Tamburo. They were beat, That's right. They were beating Burns at halftime, if you that remember that team. game. That Burns team was a good wow. team. Mikey Tamburo playing quarterback North Carolina. Sure was. Russ, I think we're getting old. Well, that was a, you know what? I think that was the very first game I ever went to as a quote-unquote employee. Oh, is that right? I was working for okay. Scout.com at the time. I There's the handoff to Collier. Collier slipped. They gave me a video camera and a $10 food voucher. I had made it. I was there. <laughs> you couldn't tell me anything. That is fantastic. A lot of fun games over the years there at North Gwinnett High School. They've had you know, a good number of good coaches. Obviously, Eric Godfrey there now. But we've had some fun times at North Gwinnett over the years. Even going back to them, which would have been the Bob Spire, I guess. Yeah, it was Bob Spire. Six minutes to go in our first half. RPO. Brian will throw. He's trying to connect with Jeremiah Jackson. That RPO got batted out of the sky. We have not seen them throw to Chroma yet, and they have done that a lot this year. It was interesting to hear Jeremy Edwards this week. How about that play? Great job. Xavier Ryan, the that Army is. commit, just going sky high to get that one. And as much as you, you, I talked about Lee County punching the ball out and getting coached, you see him. You're taught if you can't get there to leap and time it up. It's a great job there by Xavier Ryan. Yeah, Jeremy Everett said he's carved from stone. He's on his way to West Point. First Army makes some news this week. Looks like they're on their way to the American Athletic Conference. Yeah. Got a timeout here. Third down. Coach Fabrizio to make sure. Listen, the way things are going, Brandon, every possession now matters. That's right. And we'll take a look at the Lee County schedule here, presented by Personal Touch Lawn Care. We told you the only loss so far, a really hard-fought game against Colquitt County. Final margin looks like 17 points, but honestly, there are a lot of people in Leesburg will tell you they thought that Lee County could yep. have won that game. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, you start moving into region play for them. They are actually at Thomas County Central. So a little bit of an interesting comparison here. You mentioned before, Houston County gets both of, with all due respect, the two bigger region games at home. And in the case of Lee County, they have to go on the road for both those games. Yep. That's an yep. interesting comparison there. The next one of those kind of coming up October 27th. Of course, you know, Northside, veterans, those teams, obviously tough outs in their own right there as well. Once again, brought to you by Personal Touch Lawn Care. In talking to Dean Fabrizio this week, he said something interesting about every coach says, hey, we want the toughest region schedule, we, a non-region schedule we can play to prepare us for region schedule. But he also yeah. said this, which I thought was interesting, that it's just as important to play in challenging environments, loud crowds, oh, yeah. intense atmospheres, yep. as the actual competition on the field, which I thought yeah. was kind of an interesting way to look at that, yep. that the games just feel different when you're in a situation like this. Oh, it just, yeah. it, it, there's, a, there's a palpable sense that you're doing something that matters more. And having some experience with that probably does help. Third down, uh, Lee County ran a guy on the oh, field late. man. That's Nicorian Hall, and he's going to go in motion. So Nine seconds. Yeah, play seven. clock is ticking down to under five here. Brian not in a hurry as of yet. Probably doesn't need to be, but he does now, and he just gets the snap off just in time. Going to step in and throw it, and that's a great job. Stepping right into it and getting to Chroma. We said at some point in time they would throw to him, and there he is, and he helps move the chains for Lee County. Man, what a job. And a tight, you talking about a tight window? On third and nine. And I'm going to be honest, everything about that play seemed doomed for failure right until the moment it succeeded. Yeah, I mean, football is a crazy sport. Every, All the odds were stacked against him on that play. Everything seemed suspect until it was a success. Run a guy on late. Brian fakes it. Flag down, going deep. His guy is there, beautiful, over-the-shoulder catch by Jeremiah Jackson. It's 55 yards and a touchdown if it stands, but hold everything. That was a great deep ball. The Lee County 
crowd and sideline certainly is not celebrating that they think this touchdown is going to go. And everybody's moving back, so that pretty well tells you everything you need to know. Legal formation. Legal formation. Legal formation. Why? We play first down. Got my eye on North Oconee and North Hall tonight. North Hall has had much improved team. They've avenged a lot of losses this year, uh, but so far uh, North Oconee on top of them. Let's go back and see this again. A legal formation was. I, uh, I don't. I, yeah, the flag was thrown near the. I didn't see how the wide receivers lined up in that frame. Yeah, flag was thrown near the Lee County sideline. So Brian connecting with Honer. Honer has a rushing touchdown already tonight, but on this play, slammed down hard by Jaden Jackson. Jackson's had a great season for Houston County. Brian, handoff, Chroma gets a block. Here he goes. Osmani Chroma once again. It's a hat trick. Third touchdown of the night. This one, 56 yards. I'm telling you, if he gets a crease, that's a great job by 77 for Lee County. You want to see how someone doesn't get touched? Watch 77 turn his man if we get this replay one more time. Watch 77 left tackle right here. Watch him peel second level. See him sealing off? Yeah. It's over. Great job there. And he, Chroma does the rest. What a night for Usmani Chroma. Now, Houston County, to its credits, keeping pace with every single one of these moments. But it's a superstar night for Chroma, the junior running back. We'll be right back after this. This Saturday, ACC football on the CW continues with a matchup between two of the conference's rising stars. True freshman Anthony Calandria leads the Cavaliers of Virginia on the road to Boston College to face dual threat Thomas Castellanos and the high flying Eagles. I gotta get it on my seat. Virginia Boston College. Saturday on Peachtree TV, Atlanta's CW. Every day, businesses everywhere are asking, Is it possible? With Comcast Business, it is. Is it possible to help keep our online platform safe from cyber threats? Absolutely. Can we provide health care virtually anywhere? We can help with that. Is it possible to use predictive monitoring to address operations issues? We can help with that too. With the advanced connectivity and intelligence of global secure networking from Comcast Business, it's not just possible, it's happening. In the nearly 150 seasons of the league, no team has hit more home runs than the 2023 Atlanta Braves. BigTimeBats.com has released these limited edition Atlanta home run record bats. These beautiful maple bats will feature the home run totals for each player and the final total for the team laser engraved onto the bat. The bats are individually numbered and sell for $139.95 each. Go to BigTimeBats.com and see the official home run bat collection. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by Kroger. Boost by Kroger Plus. More savings, more benefits, a new level of membership. Dog Nation. Visit DogNation.com for the latest Georgia team news and recruiting information. Georgia's Rome, where the rivers meet and the mountains begin. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Seatbelts save lives. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety reminds you to buckle up before every trip. And by the U.S. Army, be all you can be. And we are back. You see our score, Lee County on top of Houston County, 28-21. About three touchdowns tonight for Usmani Chroma. Last one from 56 yards out. Seven plays, 80 yards. Breda Pest management scoring summary. We've done that a lot tonight. Both these offenses striking very quickly. And uh, Hoko gets a chance to go back on that side of the ball. Kick return got to about the 25 and no more. North Oconee's now extended its lead on North Hall. 
Good season from Lumpkin County this year, too, yep. and they're on top of the Wolves of Wesleyan right now. Heath Webb, former North Paulden head coach at one time. He was with first time I met Christian Conley and those guys over there. He's doing a really good job up there. Fun game between Appling and Pierce tonight, too. A lot of chatter across the state about that one here this this week. Big, big, big game right there for Rabin County and Fellowship. Mike Davis has got Rabin County after early season loss. Hand goes to Talib. Talib shifts gears. Now turns it on. Knocked out of bounds. 36 yard line. Yeah, you got 11 yards on that play. AJ Hill will get quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. He's got two receivers on the right, pair on the left, too. Hill going to have to hurry. Pressure comes. He shakes free of that. Now going to try to crank it up. Instead, just going to dump it off. Love that. Just checks it down. Woodburn's there to make the catch. Takes the eight-yard, seven-yard gain. Woodburn has been a prime target tonight. There's the handoff to Talib. They like that play with him. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be, you know, a coach to see when you got guys spread out left and right. It creates yep. an opportunity up the middle, those wide running lanes. They're coming. Yeah. See if he checks out of it and they get to jump off sides. I think they might have drawn him off with a hard count. And there is Williams' defense Starting back. Postman. Yep. Defense. Number two First there. Down. Williams is trying to time that up. He's trying to come from the slot position. You saw him. Creep in there late. If you're a coach, are you okay with a little bit of a gamble on that because of the value of what happens if you do get there? I mean, if, if you time it well, you don't want to give up cheap yard. You see him right there. He, because he look, he's already thinking. There's nobody here between me and that quarterback. And is that Hill recognizing that he's coming and changing his cadence because he saw him coming? Yes, slowing things down a little bit. Experienced quarterback, a lot of snap are coming again. Now they're going to change. Now they're going to change the play. Here's the question. Does Lee County check out of it? See the communication. You want to watch the hand signals. Yeah. Okay, they're probably going to check out it. C-33. Yeah. See if the backer comes this time because he was coming. That's fun game within the game type stuff. Here they come. Yep. Hill going to dump it off. That's Woodward again. Woodward going to try to cut out to the outside. Flag came in. If it stands, it's good for a first down. A sloppy last couple of minutes here. Holding offense. Mm. And that was such a quick release. It had to be inside. Let's see if they hold this linebacker that's coming. I don't know there. Kind of got out. the arm tangled up right yeah. there. Could have been on the edge as well. In a game that's had... 49 total points, probably worth considering here. Lee County does get the ball to begin yeah, the second yeah, half. Yeah, you want you don't want to cheat yourself out of possession. Yeah, you, you know you don't want to go two for one with Lee County right yeah, here. Yeah, to be down two scores would be dangerous. Hill going to keep it himself. He scored a touchdown earlier. Not typically known as a running quarterback, but content to run a couple of times here tonight. Watch Williams jump this play. Watch number two recognize this formation. Watch him come from the top. You're going to see two. Well, you don't have the wide angle there. There he comes. But two jumped that route, and it made Hill have to run the ball on a quarterback keeper. Boy, they're showing a lot of they're pressure. They're showing a lot of pre-snap pressure. But it's that game within the game. Are you going to check out of it or not? Look, there's four on three at the top. They're Here they coming. come They're again. Coming. Yep. Hill just going to hand it off to Talib. Talib finds the seam. He's still on his feet. Stays Ooh, on his feet at the man. 30, 20, 15, 10, driven out of bounds. How about that change of pace, change of direction to get himself some extra? Great play call because they recognize four in the top of the screen, four on three. They come to the bottom where they had numbers. And watch him say, get off me right here. Look at this one. Mm, great balance. It's almost like a Matrix-type move. <laughs> Man, 
Man, this has been fun. Yeah, it has been this fun. This is one half, Brandon. That's a little contact balance, too, right? Yeah, no That's your word, I've right? GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Red zone here now. Hill dumping it off. Try to connect with his fullback that time. Okay. Or I should say his tight end, really. Ty Waters tight end. I'm going to tell you right now, Lee County's defensive coordinator is coming after Hill. He is not sitting back. He is coming at him from all kind of different formations. Yeah, they're showing it again. Hand to Talib. Talib to the seven. And they're in no hurry right here. Yeah, you're right, because as we said before, when you think about the two-for-one type thing, yes. if you give it back too soon, that's two straight drives that Lee gets. Lee County fans now making some noise here on the third down play. Woodburn goes in motion. He'll settle in on the left side. Hill looks that way, throwing that way. It's caught, but he's oh. out of bounds at oh. the one. Oh, man. They have got a big decision to make here. It's fourth and goal now. Boy, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, you want to get upfield a little bit. All right, so they're going to go for it. See if they give it to, uh, they went Wildcat, remember, with the tight end. Purpose. They have done that before. There they're going to do it again with yep. Purpose again. He takes the snap. Purpose straight ahead. And he scores a touchdown. Gavin Purpose, his second touchdown of the night. And I tell you what. Tuck that play away because if they need a two-point play at the end of the night, they're going to run that. Yeah, that really worked. I mean, that's the second time in a row that that's been easily conversion. It's just good push from the offensive line, right? Yeah, you bring an extra body in, and you got a big fullback in there. Ty Waters, a tight end. And, you know, keep in mind for Houston County here, you're talking about Jeremy Blue, the left tackle. He's an Air Force commit. Luke Wilhide, the left guard. He's got college offers. Khalil House, that's a former Stanford commit who may yeah. be looking at some SEC-type SEC, yes. teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about, you know, three returning starters, three major, you know, pretty, pretty major college-type prospects here. So that's the, that's the kind of success that offensive line is capable of having. And by the way, don't forget, hey, if you love high school football, and we do, and you love high school sports, we're going to have so much for you on the brand-new Peachtree Sports Network. It begins for us next week with our drive for the GH GHSA state title as uh, Cass and Cartersville do battle. Brand new Peachtree Sports Network. Here's how you find it. It's WPCH Station 17.2, which means you can find it Channel 245 on cable. And, of course, as always, on the Atlanta News First app. And we got a crowd tonight. And you want to talk about a crowd at Northwest Georgia next week? Cass and Cartersville, that rivalry. When I first started hearing about the idea that we were going to be able to do more high school basketball games on TV and more high school baseball games on TV. You know, I've loved these other high school sports my whole life, and we understand how popular football is. It's never been quite as easy to provide TV coverage uh, for the other sports, but to think about the fact we're going to get a chance to do more of that, uh, that, that thrills me. I, I tell you, I, I just think it's such a great step forward for high school sports here in our state. I'm really excited about the Petrie Sports Network as that kick goes out of bounds. Other sports is important to I.J. Rosenberg. By the way, I.J. Rosenberg scored Atlanta president in London. For the, for the Falcons and Jacks. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, so Good he's for him. No one IJ is probably sitting around right now with a hot tea watching us. So. <laughs> That's probably the case. <laughs> Got a kicking fraction. <laughs> kicking team. We, we kicked the we, we kick the kickoff. Are right, they going to call for the re-kick here? Yeah. Don't take the penalty. They want the re-kick. And we have a chance to also give you a scoring summary brought to you by Breda Pass Management. Nine plays, 75 yards. Kerpus, second touchdown of the night for him. A receiving touchdown earlier in the Wildcat rushing touchdown there. He's been used a lot of creative ways here this evening. Kerp is also the long snapper as well, so you can tell my guy that gets involved. I saw him. He didn't get a chance to celebrate and to do all that. He had to go right back and snap the ball. Yeah, he, <laughs> tell he got done a little bit of everything. Interesting decision to, to have the re-kick here, obviously trying to make the big play happen. Devin Collier, who we've been watching closely all night long, he'll be the, the return man you'll see in a moment on the middle of the screen. My guess is that Houston County will try to keep it away from him. 
It is returnable. Got to cover. And when nice it's all job. said and done, it's about where it would have been. Nice there. job. Nice job. Just a few more hits there. Yeah, Braxton Honer was the return man there. So it's 92 seconds. You got to watch Chroma right here. Osmani Chroma's already got yeah. three touchdowns. I mean, and, and yeah, it didn't take him at about six seconds to make this thing 35 28. Can you go into a prevent defense for a running back? I don't know. I've never <laughs> seen that. You I'll might. tell you what, if they go trips to the top of the screen, you, you better worry. You better go two deep safeties. Chroma, as we told you, has been a little bit banged up. He's had a strained calf this week, so. We weren't actually sure how much of him we would even see. You see the numbers at the bottom. They got two guys stacked outside of the numbers. Man comes back in motion, putting you three on the left side here. Hand out goes to Chroma. Exactly. Chroma just moving and driving and just carrying a pile to the 45 yard line. Strong. 10 yards and another first down. And in a weird way, you'll take that if you're Houston County. Yeah, you want a clock to run. Chroma again lowers his shoulder. He still got like seven that time. He's tapping two, yep. He's averaging 8.6 yards per carry on the season. He's a terrific basketball player. Yeah, that's what I heard. They played in the state championship, I think, in basketball. Keep your eye here, Brandon Walden senior linebacker is the man who's down for Houston County right there. So let's keep our eye on that. I went down to uh, see them last spring and then that was the week of the state championship and he walked out and Coach Fabrizio said, hey, he's, he's not working out today with us. He's, he's got basketball this week and I was like, I like the two-sport athlete. I want to bring up you know, sounds like on Monday it's going to be history in the state of Georgia. Where NIL is going to pass uh, with, some, with some, you know, it's not just there's some limitations. And again, I don't know how it's going to play out, yeah. but it's, you know, there's 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 a few things you have to do to for this thing to to take place. But certainly a hot topic today. As soon as that came out, my phone blew up. I'm like, look, I, I don't know anything else about it either. We'll also tell you that's our injury report situation there. As Walden was able to get up and walk away, so you love to see that. Uh, you see him right there, of course, presented by the governor's office of highway safety. Hopefully. He's going to be okay. He goes over to try to catch his breath here a little bit. Uh, hopefully he will be okay. And Rusty, there's obviously a lot of different constituencies that weigh in on the NIL front. Yep. You know, a lot of players obviously want what they feel like is theirs. And a lot of folks want to take care of the major college prospects. We're also friends with a lot of high school coaches. And they want to coach their team. And they sure. want guys who are focused on playing on Friday real, night. So it's going to be real interesting. There are a lot of uh, constituencies to be heard from there. As Honer gets the catch, goes out of bounds. Now looking in under a minute. And... Lee County, which sometimes will play deliberately, doing some pace here. That's the handoff to Collier. Collier's helmet comes off. He's going to have to come out of the game. Yeah. Nate Langham is a big defensive lineman. He was in on that. So Croma comes back in. So he gets tackled up a little bit high. Lee County does not have a timeout left. They're, they're going to take a shot, I think. Brian will throw. Chroma was running the pass route that time, but the intended target was Jeremiah Jackson. So now we're 30 seconds in the half. Time probably matters more than the down, but it is third down. If I'm Lee County right here, I'll take a shot. Third and 10, no timeouts, out of field goal range. One of the things they have done this year, too, is they put Chroma like out wide as yeah. a receiver. But CP right motion. now, CP motion. he's lined up as an additional back. Fake the handoff to him. Brian going to throw and almost intercepted. That's communication kind of on there. The, not on the same page as Honer that time. Yeah, but I like the call. Let's take a shot. You're out of field goal range. Now you have to be a little bit careful. Because you could end up giving it back. back. Yeah, Houston short County. field. Yep. Looks so, like, looks like the punt team, yeah. Yeah, wholesale changes here. So Moy going to come out and punt it. They've tried a couple different guys at punter here this year, but it looks like they've kind of settled on Moy, who is also the place kicker as well. This first punt of the half for them? Yep. Dura Butler is also the... 
long snapper here. That's the defensive coordinator's son. Talib is your return man. Let's see if he gets a chance. They may have intentionally taken the delay of game to give himself a little bit more room. Delay of game. Offense. Fourth down. Yeah, Tiff County continues to lead Northside. We were talking about you know, the interesting week there in Tifton, but it's been a it's been a, it's been a lot going on at Tift. But they are winning right now, which I know is a welcome sign for folks down there. Good for that community. That beautiful part of South Georgia. Moy gets it away. Good punt. Going to bounce straight up in the air, though, at the 20. And go dead inside the 15. So that probably worked out pretty well. Chewed up a little bit of time yep. as the ball was rolling and also took a little bit of a Trojan bounce, too. So I'm guessing with 14 seconds, Houston County just wants to get out of here. Unless something pops, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't, it's probably okay scoring right there at the end of the half. See if they have a deep, yeah, they're going down it because they got a deep back. Yeah. Well, we had a feeling that this tonight <laughs> was going to be a good one. These two teams know each other well. 6A is so much fun this year. This is an incredibly deep region. And thus far, we have gotten everything that we thought it would be. It feels like we played seven quarters and we played two. That's a good game. That is exactly right. It is 28-28. Supremacy, at least for now, up for grabs in Region 1 of 6A. A tremendously fun second half on the way. But we've also got some good stuff in store for you during halftime as well. Our good friend Kaylee Manziel standing by there for that. We'll have some highlights for you, too, if you missed some of our first couple of quarters here. So stay with us. We'll be right back for halftime right after this. Hendrick. Drive now. Pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. Beginning the morning you opened your eyes, we spent every waking moment preparing you for the day you'd leave our nest. Whether it's driving to practice or helping with homework, it's all prepared you for, what am I going to be when I grow up? Will you be ready? After much thought, I've made my decision to take my talents to the IBEW Local 613. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers is not simply a job, it's a career. Visit IBEW613.org to begin a new future today. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown. What would happen with the children and myself? What would happen with the house? I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney. You need the best attorney and that's going to be Meriwether and Tharp. I've used R.S. Andrews 15 years, purchased two heating and air systems, so I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come, it's fixed. And I appreciate Andrews' commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. Yankee Wawa! Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life, you get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. Brett, the House and County Athletic Director. Now, I have to add, not only are you the athletic director, but you're also the assistant principal. Two huge roles. How do you balance both of those? Well, first off, we have a, a great administrative team here. We have more, you know, there's there's uh, four or five other assistant principals. And, uh, you know, so they help out, especially on Fridays um, when we're busy over here trying to get this production, which is what it is, you know, get this thing going. Uh, they pick up the load. So it's... Um, you know, you got to manage your time and uh, you got to stay on top of things. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I wanted to ask, how is it different when a game is televised like this? How does that change the course of your week? Um, well, it's really, it boils down to communication. There's a lot of communication back and forth with, with uh, the TV teams. And then, you know, we, we do what we do here. So you're just adding that into the mix. Um, but, but this bunch has made it really easy. Uh, you almost don't even know they're here today. But it's been, uh, it's been good. Uh, biggest difference has just been communicating with everybody and making sure everybody has what they need. 
Now, before you were AP and AD, which has a nice ring to it, <laughs> by the way, you were a coach here, coach, I believe, baseball, softball, and a few others. Yeah. What skills would you say transferred over from being a coach to the roles that you hold now? Um, being able to, to communicate with people, uh, just dealing with, with um, people on a day-to-day -day basis and, and like I said, people skills, but um, time management is another thing. Organization is another thing. Um, you just you, you got to compartmentalize stuff, especially on busy days like today. Um, you have to have a checklist and make sure that every every uh, I's uh, dotted and T's are crossed. So. And speaking of time management, for those at home who don't know, y'all split the stadium with another local high school. Do. How do you manage that time and make sure that your athletic teams are prepared? Well, first off, uh, you know, our county does a great job. Our facilities here are top notch, and we're blessed to be, you know, here at Freedom Field in this beautiful facility. So thanks to our board for providing just great facilities. But, um, again, communication. Um, we, we talk, me and the athletic director over at Veterans, we stay in communication with with who's doing what, when. Uh, we we have a, a calendar that's, you know, on our um, our county website that we're able to, to just kind of keep track of who's doing what, where. And um, and our coaches do a great job too. On, on the end of uh, preparation, we have great practice facilities and they do too. So, um, you know, we, we don't have a problem getting on the field and, and getting these kids prepared. Well, Mr. Red, thank you for your time. Thank you for thank allowing you. us to be here. It's been a terrific experience. Thank you. We're glad to have you guys here. Hope thank to see you back. Thank you so much. Guys, stay tuned. We have more coming up for you after the break. The fresh timer starts the minute a tomato gets picked. That's why at Kroger, we shorten the time from harvest to home. So no matter how you shop, you'll have more time to enjoy your fresh produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Thanks for watching Georgia High School Heroes presented by Ingalls. I'm Chris Bainbridge and we're counting down the best players of all time in Georgia high school football. This week, we go to Toombs County and Lions High School, where a young man would star in baseball, football, basketball, and track. Mel Blount was known for his size, speed, and toughness on the field. His talents took him to Southern University and on to the NFL and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Considered one of the best cornerbacks to ever play the game, he revolutionized the position with his physical style of play and bump and run coverage. During his pro career, he amassed 57 interceptions, five Pro Bowl appearances, was named the NFL's most valuable defensive player, and garnered four Super Bowl rings, and a place in the NFL Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching Georgia High School Heroes, presented by Ingalls. At Kroger, everyone wins when it comes to savings because you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards on pickup or delivery as you do in store. So no matter how you shop, everyone saves big. Kroger, fresh for everyone. And again, welcome back to the Halftime Show brought to you by Sports Turf. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Chris Arrington of Smart Local 85. Now, Chris, walk me through what a day-to-day -day would look like in the life of a sheet metal worker. Well, some sheet metal workers uh, just go to the shop every day, normal day, start around 6 or 7 in the morning over about 2.30 or 3, making and fabricating duct work or, or sheet metal products um, out in the field. You might have to go to the north side of Atlanta or Albany or wherever to perform the work. Um, but it, it, it's a good career. Uh, I liked it because I went to several different places. I didn't have to go to the same place every day. Now, from what I understand, y'all have a brand new training center. What makes it different and why did y'all decide that there was a need for it? Um, well, when we built the first school or the school we're in now we only had probably 50 to 70 apprentices now we got 250 to 300 um, we needed to expand we went from we've got 17 booths right now we're going to 40 welding booths uh, bigger classrooms a lot more classrooms and, and we've got a, a hydraulic brake and a, a hydraulic shear now and and it's really imp impressive compared to where I started. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the apprenticeship program, what sorts of skills do apprentices acquire through the program? Um, you learn math, you learn how to fabricate the uh, products that you need, um, how to measure up in the field to create those products. So uh, it's 
it's very good uh, leadership roles. There's foreman's positions, uh, drafting, all sorts of possibilities. And so for those at home who may be considering a position with Smart Local 85 or just wants to know more, what piece of advice would you give them? Um, they can give us a call. They can look at uh, JTC85.org. There's an application online, and they, they can go through that process and, and become a member of SMART. Mr. Arrington, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. But let's have a look at the Lee County Band brought to you by Meriwether and Tharp. are committed, focused on the details, and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Hey, I have your back, you have my back, we're going to do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college, where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. And welcome back to the Halftime Show brought to you by Sports Turf. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Sager. Halftime reads 28-28, which as far as I'm concerned, it's 0-0. And that's what the board has looked like all night. This is the game that we've been waiting on. What has been your evaluation this far? It's hard to even tell which offense has impressed me more. I mean, you talk about the the balance that Houston County is showing, just a running game of Lee County. I think we're watching the best region in 6A, possibly the state this year. You factor in Thomas County Central, these other teams, whoever comes out of this one, I think they're all going to uh, give that playoff bracket some trouble. And we've got to talk about Usman Chroma, the running back from Lee County. He's number 32, three touchdowns already. It seems like every time they get the ball in his hands, he's making big plays. Who does he remind you of, Craig? His body type, uh, Richard Samuel, former UGA running back, went to Cass just because he's so big and physical and can just get just straight downfield. He's got long arms. He's really impressive. Set the tone with the touchdown on the first snap of the game. It's going to be interesting, though. I think Lee County gets that ball first. Uh, we, we will see if he does more in the second half, but what a game so far. And he's only a junior, so imagine what he's going to be capable of next year. Now, we have a phenomenal game going on here in Middle Georgia tonight, but let's take a look at some scores going on across the state. This is our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta. All right, let's see what we've got here. A lot of games that look like they're coming to an end. Oconee County over Hebron Christian, 29-14. Walton over North North Paulding in the third quarter, 23-14. Both teams were undefeated coming into tonight's game, so we knew one team was going to have to take a loss. What else stands out to you, Craig? Yeah, the Newton and Grayson game, it looks like Grayson has started to pull away. That's a big result for Archer, though. That's another crowded region. Uh, a big win over Brookwood tonight, if they can hold on, would put them in great position. And then Oconee County, they've had some losses early in the season, but that's a big result so far in 3A. 
Taking a look at our next set of scores, East Paulding shutting out Noonan only the second quarter right now. That could potentially change. We see a few other shutouts on the board, Creekview and Etowah, as well as Gainesville and Lanier. Man, Gainesville has been on a roll, and it might be a minute before somebody has the chance to compete with them. Yeah, their offense looks even better this year. They get better every week, it seems like. They are just cruising on all, all cylinders. East Paulding is a team that has been really impressive. They're a couple of plays away from perhaps even being 6-0 and this season. It's Chris Hirsch field his second uh, season at East Paulding they're in that region with Hughes and Douglas County as well so we'll see how they do this year and then Ola and Warner Robins Ola was undefeated coming into that I believe it's 2020 now late in the fourth quarter it's been a thriller taking a look at our next set of scores greater Atlanta Christian off to a hot start the best start that they've had in wow the last couple of years Calhoun over Cartersville in the third quarter, 17-0. I know that one was a big shocker to us. And Cass playing a big rival in Woodland, and they're up 14-6 in the third. Yep, all those are 5A matchups right there. You see the parity throughout the state so far in 5A. Some really interesting results. I love the way GAC is playing. They look like they're going to challenge Kell in that region. And then Calhoun, they had a big lead on Cartersville last year when they uh, opened the region. Cartersville came back. We'll see if Calhoun can hold them off. And then uh, Cass is doing their best to set up a big showdown with Cartersville next week. And looking at our 4A teams right here, Cedartown and Central Carrollton all tied up in the third quarter. And then we have North Oconee, who's impressed us all season long, shutting out North Hall as of right now. And then we've got some other scores. Craig, what's sticking out? Central Carroll in Region 7 with Cedartown. I believe they just went up a touchdown. There's been multiple the fake punt touchdown, fake field goal touchdown in that game. They're trying to get in that driver's seat in the region. Uh, North Oconee continues to cruise. And there's been some other big results tonight. I think Prince Avenue Christian is down big on Monroe area. Sorry, on Mary Persons. We'll see if they can come back. But that would snap, I believe, a 20-game win streak for them, one of the longest in the state. And wow, what some great games we have going on in the state tonight. We will come back to you in the post game, keep you updated on everything that's going on. We do have the third quarter coming up, so let's take a look at the Houston County Band brought to you by Meriwether and Tharp. Ed Ingles, we're proud to partner with area athletics from Little League to the pros, college tournaments to high school heroes. It's all in the bag. You ready? Hold on, let me check the score. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. Come on, we're right there. Come on, baby. It's only when we need. Touchdown, baby! Touchdown! Are your neighbors watching the same game? Yeah, my 5G home internet delays the game a bit, but you get used to it. Here, try these. I stole them from an airport. They're noise-canceling earmuffs. Great! Solid! Greek salad? Exactly! Don't delay the game with T-Mobile 5G home internet. Get Xfinity internet for $20 a month for 12 months. Switch today. In the nearly 150 seasons of the league, no team has hit more home runs than the 2023 Atlanta Braves. BigTimeBats.com has released these limited edition Atlanta home run record bats. These beautiful maple bats will feature the home run totals for each player and the final total for the team laser engraved onto the bat. The bats are individually numbered and sell for $139.95 each. Go to BigTimeBats.com and see the official home run bat collection. The Volkswagen Taos. German engineering everyone can get into. Get 3.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Taos S or lease one for just $2.29 a month. Halftime continues here at Freedom Field, Houston County High School. 28-28 is our score. A lot of fireworks in the first half here, setting up 
Really good drama in the third and fourth quarter as well. In fact, let's go back and revisit some of what we've just seen, starting with our halftime stats presented by the Mechanical Trades Institute. And what I see, Rusty, is a lot of offense being piled up there on both sides. You want to see big player, big time players making big time plays? Well, that was one half of it from both sides of the football. And keep your eye on this. No one has turned it over as of yet. In the yeah. game, we've had a lot of fireworks. You haven't had the big offensive miscue as of yet, but you have seen uh, a lot of fireworks. A lot of that from Lee County on the ground with Usmani Chroma. Uh, Houston County probably a little bit more adept through the air with A.J. Hill and both these two junior star players, high level national recruits. They have been as advertised here thus far. Let's find out more about that as we see our halftime highlights here presented by Ford. And we will begin with Osani Kruma on his first touch of the night, all the way back for a touchdown. Yeah, first touch of the night. We were kind of highlighting that Lee County running game and it didn't take long, but that right there was the answer early for Houston County. A.J. Hill, his feet, you see more Kroma. Absolutely. So that counted for him. He crossed the uh, plane. And then uh, Houston County coming back, and it's Cale Woodburn. He's been, he's been a name to know in this first half. He's a Cincinnati commit, and he has looked the part here tonight. And then Honer coming back with the score. Then A.J. Hill coming right back and throwing a touchdown to Gavin Kerpis, one of two touchdowns of the night for Kerpis. But how about Chroma again? Just glad third touchdown for him there and then another second touchdown from a uh, Kirkus there too that was fourth and goal by the way right late in the half from the Wildcat quarterback spot and that's how for the most part our first half came to an end so back and forth a lot of scoring star turns from really both sides with Chroma and Hill uh, and a lot of excitement here so we're going to show you a great third quarter Give us one more commercial timeout. We'll pay a couple of bills, and then we'll come back and we'll be ready for second half action right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Housing County High School, the Black and Silver... Being a Kroger Boost member? Free delivery on the Kroger products you love, and more rewards, too, like double fuel points on everything you buy. Experience a new level of membership, starting as low as $59 a year with Boost by Kroger Plus. Learn more at Kroger.com today. Are you 18 years of age or older? Become a star. The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office is now hiring for Deputy Sheriff with a signing bonus up to $4,700. They also have civilian and trades positions available. If you are interested in a career with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office, visit GoGCSO.com to learn more about compensation, incentives, benefits, and areas where you can start your career today. Are you ready to rise to the call? Join GCSO today and become a star. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by the Mechanical Trades Institute, the best kept secret everyone should know about. Smart Local 85, sheet metal is a smart move. Gatorade, fuel tomorrow. The Georgia Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors Association. Careers in SheetMetal.com, building a solid future. The Atlanta Falcons, rise up dirty birds. And by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. Together, we can make a difference. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel, third quarter action about ready to begin. 28-28 is our score. And Rusty, I'm curious, we've seen both offensives have success. Do you see a halftime adjustment that you'd like to see made? Is there something that one of these teams could do differently that gives it a better edge here? you got to tackle. you got to eliminate these big... You know, you look at, at Kale Woodburn, he's broke a lot of tackles in space and made big plays for Lee County. He's got a zero kind of in on him. But if you're Houston County, you got to get Chrome on before he gets going. I mean, he's, you can't allow him to get to the second level. He just takes it to the house. I got one quick scoring update. Warner Robbins 
went for two with one second on the clock and beat Ola 28-27. Okay, so Warner Robins bounces back from the blowout loss last week to Houston County, getting the win against region foe Ola there. So it'll be good news for the game we have next week, Cartersville and Cass. Cartersville was down 17 to nothing late in the third. It's 17 to 14, Cartersville over Calhoun. Cartersville has the ball on the four-yard line with 30 seconds left. Yes. So we got some exciting finishes going as we start our second half. You do have that indeed. And, of course, as you see, uh, Lee County uh, getting ready here, and we're excited about that next week. Cass yeah, and Cartersville for the very first time ever on the brand-new Peachtree Sports Network. Make some history. Uh, it's WPCH Channel 17.2, but Channel 245 there on cable, and you're going to get used to that over the course of the next few months, next few years, because we're going to be broadcasting a lot of high school football in there, eventually available statewide, and not just football in the coming years there as well, coming months here too. Basketball, baseball. Uh, I.J. Rosenberg, I talked to him this week. They are really going to focus on lacrosse as well. So it is going to be, for lack of a better term, almost like an ESPN for high school, yeah. high school sports in the state of Georgia, and they're going to cover everything, which I think is important. We, we love covering high school football, and we get to do that every week. But I think it's also important to these communities that some of these other sports get the exposure as well. And I can't wait to watch some high school baseball. Absolutely. So yeah. much talent in the state of Georgia. So uh, my son and I, you know, this past year, we went to the stadium Gwinnett. It's called Cool Ray Field. And yep. we saw, you know, actually, we saw Houston County, uh, uh, you know, win that state championship there, you know, yeah. in that spot. It was a, a fun thing to be able to see. Uh, and by the way, we'll do our Gordo's Cheesy Play of the Game here, presented by uh, Gordo's Cheese Dip, as you see the great collection of uh, Houston County uh, fans there. And we'll see the uh, kickoff here, I believe, from earlier. Uh, and that's our Gordo's Cheesy Play of the Game, presented by Gordo's Cheese Dip. We've got a Georgia player supposed to be in Montgomery right there in the crowd, and I believe he's missing curfew tonight. Apparently that's the case. Cartersville scored six seconds left. Cartersville is up 20 to 17 on Calhoun. They were down 17 to nothing late in the third. All right, so now we're ready to begin third quarter action. Benji Malcolm will kick things off. Lee County deferred its choice. Gets the ball, but it's a short kick and it's going to bounce. That's a live ball up for anybody. Fielded by one of the up men there at the 40-yard line. These short kicks are an adventure because yes, it they is. can go for a touchdown. They can result in a turnover. Almost anything can happen. Seems like every week last year we saw that. We haven't seen it as much this year, but last year we were like, man, every short kick and every angle kick and every squib kick was every week. And the strategy here is pretty simple, which is if you don't know for a fact you can kick a touchback on every single kick, you're almost better kicking short because it is really dangerous to kick deep to a return man. Yeah, you got a dynamic athlete, a couple of them back there for Lee County. So, so for the first time tonight, Weston Bryan going to be flanked by two running backs on either side of him. A little bit of a different look for Lee County. The hand going to go to Collier. On actually, that's Honer. Honer has a rushing touchdown already tonight, and Honer gets the first carry of the game. I'm sure, it's a first carry of the second half. Keep in mind, uh, Usmani Kromas got three touchdowns, but he's also dealing with a little bit of a calf injury. So, looking for opportunities to limit him when possible. I saw them stretching him, some extra stretching as the second half begins. You see him in the pistol set behind the quarterback. Three receivers to the right side. That's been dangerous when they've given it to Kroma in that situation. He crosses the 45 up to about the 46. You see that. He's coming off, and he's fighting through this. Again, you, you talk about how good a night he has had, Brandon, and he probably started at 80%. He's probably around 70%, especially as the night cools off. That That's thing right. tightens down tightens a little up. bit more. You see him there trying to stretch it out. So Devin Collier now becomes the running back. If you're just joining us, that's a Georgia Southern commit. So that's a college player, too. He becomes now a slot receiver on third down. Third and four is what they need. Or Brian like straight ahead. Lowers his shoulder. Got it. And he's going to get the first down. Love the play call. You see Houston County go with Kerpus. They're tied in. They take their quarterback, Brian. And just let him do work. That brings up a first and 10 for the Trojans at the 
Yeah, he almost they, functioned. They, like list, that. they list him at 242. Yeah, he's a big guy. Big guy. Chroma will come back in. Jeremiah Jackson, the wide receiver, back in the game here, too. Jackson becomes a slot receiver on the right side of the formation. Chroma becomes a receiver on the left. We haven't really seen Chroma line up wide like that, go in motion or anything. And that's been a fairly big part of the offense for Lee County here this year. Now they're going to play with a little bit of pace coming to the line quick. Yep. Brian fakes the handoff. Going to look Chroma's way. Chroma first catch of the night now. Dancing at the 40, cross the 40, should say 35, down about 32. One of the things that House and County coach Jeremy Edwards said is Chroma's going to come back out of the game is they don't even try to disguise it. When they want to throw to Chroma, they'll just put him out wide. Edward one on one. White, downfield. Play second down. So penalty goes against know. Lee County. From, from the uh, five. Yeah, he had two wide receivers. Nobody was offset the line of scrimmage. So it made one, it made the inside receiver dead, and he went out. So sixth penalty of the night on Lee County. That's starting to be a little bit of a factor. Yep. Houston County's had its share of penalties, too. Brian keeps it himself. Great and takes job. a big wow. hit. Good job that time by Western Ard, sophomore linebacker. Man, way to snip that out. He's got quarterback responsibility, and I want you to watch him get downhill. As soon as he sees him keep this on the mesh, watch him attack downhill. Perfect. Leads with his head right there into the shoulder. Good job there by the sophomore linebacker. Chroma is going to become a receiver again. You will see him in the right side of the formation, very top of your screen. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with Darian Pat Darius Patterson up there. Let's watch this battle. That's where Ryan's going to look, and he's going to throw it, and it is good coverage that time by Patterson. And Chroma may have had a step behind him, but the throw was a little bit in front of him. Nice sportsmanship by both players right there, kind of giving each other five, but ball's a little bit. Look how easy he gets off. Great coverage. Look at him staying in phase right there. Nice yeah. job by the defender. Turns around. Brandon, what he did perfect was he turned around and got his head on the ball. Moore going to have to come in and punt now. He gets it away. Talib is the return man, scooping it up there at the 16. And he's going to go straight down right there. Good special teams play. To get Talib right where he was. Good job by Houston County coming out and answering there to forget a stop. All right, so here we go. Quick timeout. We'll be right back. Third quarter just getting underway here on Peachtree TV. At Creeders, we handcraft every batch of our delicious popcorn. Like our Creeders cheese and caramel mix. Great on their own, even better together. Try Creeders, handcrafted small batch popcorn. Success on game day starts with a great game plan. When you give maximum effort, produce in the clutch, and work as a team. Not only will you be your best, you'll bring your best. Greatness starts here. Ford F-150, the official truck of the Georgia Bulldogs. Now get 3.9% financing for 60 months, plus up to 2,500 cash back on a 2023 Ford F-150 truck. Hey, dogs. I love playing pick and roll ball. It's pickleball. That's what I said, pick and roll ball. Pinnacle Home Improvements is now offering zero down payment, zero interest, and zero payments for 12 months. Get a new roof installed, windows for your entire house, or new siding, and make it easy on yourself for a limited time only. I love playing pick and roll ball. It's pick a ball. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. Mix and match a double cheeseburger, six piece chicken McNuggets, or small fries for just $3.69. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Go! And a uh, great look there at the Lee County cheerleaders. 
traveling up for Leesburg for our game here tonight. 28-28 is our score. Houston County going back on offense. Hand goes to Taliban first down. He crossed the 20 up to the 21. May have gotten four that time on first down. I wonder if we see both teams trying to establish the run but to control the clock a little better. Yeah, most of the first half was played at a frenetic pace. Yep. This has been a little bit more deliberate here. But Hill will look to throw. Pressure on him. Now he's going to throw it away. Flag comes in in the area of holding. Hill didn't really have much of a receiver in that area, but I believe he was out of the pocket. Yeah, Lee County brought two linebackers right there. Go, from, from the spot. From the Now nice scrimmage. Yes. Uh, the holding offense. Repeat second down. Talk me through the thought process on, I mean, obviously you want pass pressure if you can get it, but why specifically against Hill tonight are, are, are they doing that? I, I, listen, you think of somebody six foot five, and, and he's not known for his athleticism. And when you say this guy's going to be at a spot, let's go get him. But what he has shown tonight is the ability to make you miss a little bit and get out of the pocket. Are they trading much like one on one coverage as an, as a trade off for oh, the yeah. pass pressure? Oh, yeah. yeah, they're definitely right there because they brought two backers. What Houston County had there, they had too many deep routes and didn't have time for him to get the ball loose. Kerpis goes in motion, becomes a slot receiver. Hill looking his way, but now going to throw. Uh, and a man is there, and that's Johnson. Ricky Johnson. And you see the game within the game. If you're going to come after my quarterback and play one-on-one -on, -one on Ricky Johnson, we're going to take a deep shot. Relatively quiet night for Johnson thus far. Did have a big catch early in the first half. One-on-one. -on -one. Gets a big catch there. The Stanford commit comes up big for the Bears. Great catch. Great ball. Hand off to Talib again. You can almost just count on that play on first down. And they're getting three and four a pop. Yeah, it's gaining positive yards, but it's keeping Lee County honest on offense, keeping, on defense, too. Keeping the clock. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now second and seven, second and six, maybe. And you touched on this. The pace for both these offenses slowed down a pretty good bit. Lee County showing that pressure again. That gets Hill checking his sideline. You can see how good look there, Jeremy Coach Edwards. Edwards, who's changed shirts since got the out, first got, half. He tried to make, make it a little cool on the sideline there. Hill going to look deep down the field, and it's intercepted. Intercepted and coming back is Corey McDowell. McDowell gets a block. And it's going to finally go down there at the 40-yard line. So he'll put it up for grabs. And yep. McDowell was there to force the game's first turnover. Not a great decision by Hill. Really the first bad decision I've seen him make. Not only did he throw it short, Brandon, he threw it into double coverage. And Lee County, let's see, Lee County steps up. But they, they've got coverage there. They've got him bracketed both ways. And Collier just, just gets an easy catch. Decides to bring that one out. Back up in Northwest Georgia next week, of course. And speaking of Northwest Georgia, exciting things taking place in Georgia's Rome right now. You can join the Legacy Reunion Earth, Wind, and Fire alumni for an evening of monster grooves, high energy, and danceable hits that combine jazz, R&B, disco, and soul. It's Friday, October 20th at the historic Rome City Auditorium. Look and here this. we go. Look How about Chroma coming back? Inside the 35. Check out... Uh, RomeGA.us slash tickets for more details. Are they going to have a, they got a flag? Usually, watch him get the edge. Yeah, I got to go to that. Holding offense. 35. Yeah, usually when you see somebody able to get the edge that easy, somebody's got some cloth. Big win for Burke County tonight over Wayne County. That's Franklin Stevens back at his alma mater. He is. He is doing a really good job there. So tough break for Lee County on the penalty, erasing another big Osmani Chroma run. Now looking at 635 in the third quarter. 56 combined points in the first half, none so far here in the second. 
And that's going to be a completion, but not much doing there. Braxton Honer actually lost a yard on that completion. Both teams have come out a little bit sluggish. Yeah, a really a different vibe to the third quarter than we had for most of the second half. Brian looking at five across defensively for Houston County, and I believe a Bear defender jumped. And Coachman, defense, second down. I mean, he looks like a linebacker. He does. Gives you a little bit of a Gunner Stockton vibe there. I, mean, I don't think he's, Stockton's 240 he's, pounds. He's Gunner's not 6'4 either, yeah. but the lower bill thickness. Honer goes in motion. Hand to Chroma. And Houston County had the, probably the most success they've had against him all night long. He may have only gotten a yard if that that time, and that's as much of a win as they've had against Cromont this evening. Now looking at third down. Bears fans sense a chance to get their defense off the field. Brian fakes the handoff, will throw, and it's almost Ooh. intercepted through the hands of Honer, and then almost picked off by Jakari Brown, another Georgia Southern committed cornerback. Ooh. Dangerous. Brown in coverage there. He had made a really big name for himself last week with a nice job battling against Isaiah Canyon, the terrific wide receiver for Warner Robbins. It's a fake punt. Flag comes in. They didn't get it. There's a flag. So the snap goes to Collier. And he's short of the first down. Even. We got holding. White. Decline. Man. First down. This has been a strange third this has quarter. Been a strange third quarter. And I, you know, I. I think both teams are so worried about giving up a possession and giving up a score. I believe they get to 48 right here. See 48? See that? Right there. See that? Yep. Yep. And, you know, a good job by Hoko. They had him wrapped had up. It, it wasn't anyway. Good. Yeah. Wasn't going to be a first down anyway. But now, in, in what has been a little bit of a, like you said, a little bit of a sloppy third quarter, all of a sudden now, Houston County has the gift of a much shorter field for the offense. And so, the headline here is the A.J. Hill interception doesn't hurt because they've got the football back now. Hill, hand to Talib. That's your first down yep, play. Talib. <laughs> that has been their that is, move. That has been their first down. Now Got about three that time. There you go. You start talking about the Tennessee offense comparison. You see at the top of the screen, both wide receivers outside the hash, up around the numbers. Of course, the Josh Heupel offense puts them outside the numbers. Outside the numbers, yeah. So they're going two on two up top. See what they do. See, this number two is going to split between that 42 and those two guys. So 40, he's going to cover the middle. He's coming. Yeah, here comes he's, Lee County again. Hill gets it off. Great and job. Great right there. coverage. So great job. It's a pass caught by Kyle Woodburn. But he was corralled immediately by a couple of Lee County defenders. Two on two up top, and Jackson's able, the sophomore corner is able to get off his block and make the tackle. Yeah, Lasai Jackson's already had a pretty good night tonight. We've called his name a couple of times. Nice job. Man, it's fun watching the game within the game. So now you're looking at third down. This is an important possession for Houston County because they got the gift. Empty of set. the failed fake punt. Not bring him back yeah, in. Yeah, Talib comes back over. Now he becomes a running back. Hill, pressure, going to dump it off screen to Talib. Talib looking for that block. There's flag. a flag down. So let's see what this is. It's going to be a... 
a blocking infraction. They're going to wave it off. Dean Fabrizio doesn't like that. Did, what we got here? Well, they call him man down Blind, field. Yeah, okay. Oh, Illegal man down yeah, field. Yeah, okay. Yep. So they're going to wave that off. So they're saying he's not past the five-yard box, I guess. So uh, the result of the play makes it fourth and short. And that's going to send out the Wildcat formation again. This has worked already tonight. And Kirk is straight ahead, lowers his shoulder, lowers the boom, and moves it for Hoko. I'm telling you, man, when they need two, they've got that in their arsenal. There is a Lee County player slow to get other, a couple of them per second, and one is still down. Appears to be in a, yep. some pain here. All right, we'll take a quick timeout here. We'll try to give you an update on this, and we'll see Houston County continuing its drive as well. So quick timeout, and then we'll be right back. Man, you know how to do this? Man, I don't even know. I was flipping burgers last week. Violation, unsportsmanlike conduct, impersonating a craftsman. Skilled trade unions are well-trained career pros, not part-timers. Construction is a rewarding and lucrative career with the advancement potential, but you have to do it the right way with the right training. Learn how you can be a pro. Find your career at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. Planting season is here, and it's time to get your yard looking its best. So treat your yard to the perfect touch from the professionals at Personal Touch Lawn Care. Mowing, maintenance, design, and construction. Personal Touch Lawn Care does it all. If my yard is taken care of, it's one thing off my list that I don't have to worry about. Sign up now for monthly maintenance and get the 12th month free. Big enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Personal Touch Lawn Care, 770-908-1238 or online at ptlcatlanta.com. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. The try for the GHSA state title is presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Transform your future today. Okay, we are back here. Want to give you an update on the injured Lee County player. That was Corey McDowell, important player. He has the game's only interception. We saw him being 10 2 on the sideline, so we'll see if he's able to he, go back he in. He's coming back in after this play. He's got his helmet on, saw the trainer, doctor talk with him, did some motions with his shoulder. And he is already ready to go back in, standing beside his coach. That is good news for all of us, whether you're a Lee County fan or not. Hill with some time. Now pressure coming. Hill going to have to try to just throw it away. We've seen that a lot tonight where yep. the initial pressure is kind of met and then not quite enough time to find that open man. Tell you what, Chase Angry, 19. Great name for linebacker, too, by the way. He, he is. And Rusty, you're right, there's McDowell back yep. in the game, so you'd love to see that. Yeah, angry coming into the night, 24 tackles, two sacks, so he's already had a good year. Blitz. It's a little pop pass RPO. Woodburn caught at the 20-yard line. So 12 on the play. Great job through right into the blitz. What you're taught to do, throw right into that blitz. First down for Houston County. Let me guess, 24. Yeah, that, they go back to it. And we are now in the red zone, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Big night for Raven County tonight. Yeah, Mike Davis really, you know, early loss for Raven County. You kind of forget about them up north and... That's a young team, too. That's a really young team. He's got a really young quarterback he talks to me about. Woodburn goes in motion. Fake the handoff to Talib. In zone throwing. Oh. Incomplete. Attempted to Ricky, John Ricky Johnson. Messiah Jackson in the coverage again. 
Another Lee County player down. It's going to be third and nine coming up, but hold everything for the injury situation. While we check on that, we'll also give you a shout out to our friends at Breda Pass Management because did you know that in the area the size of a football field, there's room for more than one million termites? So the question you should ask yourself is what's stopping these termites from finding your home? Well, you can let Breda Pass Management protect your home from termites and prevent these silent destroyers from costing you thousands of dollars in damage. You can find out more at BredaPest.com. That's B-R-E-D-A, BredaPest.com. Live action here, 28-28 is our score. We had 56 combined points the first half, and we were seeing big plays left and right. We have seen a much more methodical third quarter and, frankly, a much more carefully played third quarter. I think both coaches decided, hey, we've got to try to run this ball a little bit more. Lee County has a fake punt, and Houston County stopped it. It's been the big play so far in this third quarter. There was also the interception of A.J. Hill there as well. Yep. Hill keeps it himself, has a rushing touchdown tonight. Has not rushed it much this season up until tonight, though. And that's going to be fourth down now coming up. Decision time, maybe. Kicking game, I'm not sure. Yeah, they haven't had a need to try field goals yet this year. It's not purpose either, the Wildcat quarterback. They're a little too far away from that. Instead, it's just going to be Hill lining up traditionally. See if Lee County changed it. Didn't show pressure. You've got Johnson and Woodburn, the two receivers on the right. Play clock going under five. Hill, pressure, gets rid of it, and it's a touchdown. Ricky Johnson from 17 yards out. And the Bears are on top. You want to watch a big league power five throw. Watch A.J. Hill avoid angry again. Watch him step up, climb the pocket, and throw this as ball down the field. Hold everything. There's a penalty marker down. I don't know if that's going to be a face mask against Lee County, maybe. Yep. They got, they got after, a heel. After the play, they have a personal foul defense. So that's not what I saw. So either way, the touchdown stands. Man, what a strike from A.J. Hill on fourth down, Brandon. Yes. A big play. Fourth and seven. Personal foul, defense. Pure will be enforced on the kickoff. That's big, too. That is big. Number 19. Number 19. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Angry got called out there. I think he got him on the when he came by then. Yeah, what they're calling. Benji Malcolm will try the PAT. And it is good. And Houston County has taken the lead here. 35 to 28. 5 and 0 oh, and playing here at home. And thrilling its fans here for the moment. Let's also remind you, speaking of thrilling fans, obviously Atlanta Falcons fans excited about so much with this team here right now, including the fact that group ticket packages are available for Falcons home games. You can learn more about options for youth sports teams, client hosting events, and more at atlantafalcons.com slash tickets. What is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like phone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. All right, let's see our scoring summary here presented by Breda Pest Management. 10 plays, 43 yards, 239 off the clock. Ricky Johnson, the Stanford commit, his touchdown. Gives the uh, Bears the lead. And uh, after the penalty enforced on the kickoff, and you, you sometimes wonder if more teams should try this, 
the kick goes short of the end zone, and then they make a nice tackle there at the 15, and that's yeah. Yeah. valuable deep field position yep. back yep. Uh, deep in the uh, Trojan territory there. Rogers having a tough time with his helmet. Yeah, he really has. I think he's leaving it up to kind of sell yeah. the fact that he feels like he was <laughs> infracted upon. I like it. I believe it, Brandon. This is that's Towson County's first lead tonight. Yeah, we've we've seen Lee County lead, Houston County battle back, and then Lee County were to get back in front, but now Houston County's come all the way back to now take the lead for the first time here. Weston Bryan hand off to Chroma. And that's two carries in a row in which Houston County's had Chroma kind of bottled up well corralled. Yeah. And that's saying something given the fact that he had three touchdowns earlier. I don't know his complete stats, but he's probably north of 200. Certainly would have been with that last carry I'd got called back. Hand to him again, going to go left side. Now cut back inside and good tackle by Xavier Ryan, the Army commit. Senior 16 tackles on the year coming into the night's game. And here it is, third down again. And you sort of feel like momentum. Third yes. quarter was up for grabs, third but now it sort of feels like it's definitely on yep. that Hoko sideline. Yep. Chroma becomes a wide receiver just out of the frame. Brian looks the other way, though. Pass complete and a big job defensively. Darius Patterson's there to make the tackle. And fourth down is forced. Nice tackle there. Keep everything in front of you. Third and seven. And now Moy's going to have to punt. Talib back deep. Got to cover. Yeah, he has not really had the chance tonight on a couple of punts to really break one. Moy's done a pretty good job. It's yeah. not quite a rugby kick, but it's almost like a rugby style kick. Short snap. Uh -oh. That's not a fake. Moy, to his credit, gets it off, and that's about as good as that one could have been. That was not a fake. That was a short snap, I believe. Moy's unhappy about it, uh, yep. and the uh, Houston County sideline is loving it. Let's see this again. Were they going to fake that? They were going to fake it. Look. Okay, so I thought it was a short snap, but Collier was going for it. They had they pulled to. Okay. If we if we could run that back after this play, I want you to watch the two interior linemen. Okay. They pull. Low snap. Talib straight ahead. He's still driving. What a run. Inside the 30, down to about the 26. One thing, two things I want you to look at if we go back to this punt. I want you to watch how short he is. He's not deep. Look how close he is to the line of scrimmage. He's an up back. Watch the two guards right here pull. See that? Those two guys, 12 and 40. Okay. They, they pulled. Yeah. To, to so an amazing roll of the dice. That would have been the second straight yes. uh, fake punt by Lee County. And what ends up happening here is it gives good field position to a Houston County team that feels like it's got momentum as we go into the fourth quarter. But it's anybody's ball game. We're having a good time here on a Friday night. This Saturday, ACC football on the CW continues with a matchup between two of the conference's rising stars. True freshman Anthony Calandria leads the Cavaliers of Virginia on the road to Boston College to face dual threat Thomas Castellanos and the High Flying Eagles. I gotta get it on my Virginia Boston College Saturday on Peachtree TV Atlanta CW. Did you know that Ingalls sells more organics than any other store? Or that they run their own dairy? Or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Did you know that they have more local craft beer than any place else? Or that they have energy smart stores? Or that they professionally slice and package imported cheese from Europe? Did you know about their giant international aisle, local farm partnerships, curbside pickup, wine department? Or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. 
It's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. This summer is the best time ever to own a Jeep Grand Cherokee from Ed Voiles Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Right now, Ed Voiles has over 200 brand new Jeeps on the ground for you to choose from. And right now, during the Jeep Adventure Days, you can take as much as $12,000 off on your new Jeep. That's right, up to $12,000 off. This month, all the 2023 Jeeps must go. So right now at Ed Voiles, you will see nothing but our lowest possible price. Only at Ed Voiles Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Cop Parkway, Marietta. All right, I'm joined on the field now with Coach Edwards. Coach, the defense really stepped up in that third quarter, got some big stops, forced them on third downs. What have you seen just from that defensive effort? Yeah, we made a few adjustments at halftime, you know, come out playing like our hair's on fire. We got to keep it up if we want to try to hold these guys off in the fourth quarter. Awesome. Best of luck. Thanks, Coach. We will see you in the fourth quarter. It's been a great game so far. Housing County grabbed the lead. Craig Sager, Jr., thank you so much. And it's a good situation here for Houston County after the miscue on the punt by Lee County. At live action, I did not think it was a fake, but Rusty correctly points out that it was. Yep. Second straight attempt at a fake punt. Both go into Devin D1 Collier, and they have both been unsuccessful, and it's created an opportunity for Houston County to really grab some momentum. Looking at second down after the hill keeper. Big Just, win, big win tonight for Buford. Dylan Raiola, five touchdown passes. Against how about Collins that? Hill. Of course, Collins Hill, 2021 state champ. So big battle there for Buford down the 7A classification. Hill throwing sideline. Woodburn the intended target. That's over his head. If you are just joining us, A.J. Hill, the Houston County quarterback, that's one of the top quarterbacks in the country a junior that's the class of 2025 yep. his counterpart on the other side at least in the when it comes to lee county offense the junior running back osmani chroma already three touchdowns to them ranked the number two overall running back in the country by on 3.com for the 2025 class aj hill right here number two is the number five rated quarterback in the country for his class as well lee county coming with pressure again and Going to dump off the Talib on the screen. Talib's got some room across the 20-yard line. That's first down. You, no, excuse me. That's going to be going to be short. Looking at fourth down now. Probably about a yard or two. We'll call it fourth and one. So here we go. Going to go back to purpose in the Wildcat. This has worked all night long, and that's close. That is close. Lee County thinks they got the stop, but of course they would. You know who Talop reminds me of? The way he's able to catch the ball out of the backfield, Bryce Hicks from Carrollton. That's a good comparison. Of course, Hicks injured. Yep, unfortunately. Again this season for the Trojans. But, but how valuable he is as a pass catcher. I like the comparison. They're going to yep. bring it out and measure it, I think. Mm. Boy, this is big. It's a big one This here. is big right here. I mean, based on what we saw in live action, if he got it, it was not by much. And that, that play to Kirpus has worked all night long. Let's see these chains they get stretched <laughs> out. Everybody's leaning on this one. I mean, really, right? How far are we going? Let's see. It's going to be That's short. just a little bit short. And Lee County gets the stop. A huge stop. And that particular time, Kerpus kind of tried to bounce it instead of getting north-south. And Lee County set the edge, made him short. You're talking about a tale of two halves, the first half, and we'll see it again. See, usually he's following, but you see 91 blow it up there and push his lineman back. That made him bounce. So good job by Leroy Jackson of getting the penetration and making Kerpus have to bounce that thing and try to go north-south. Obviously, Lee County, one of the strengths of the team is that defensive line, and Jackson among the strengths of that defensive line. They've been a little bit banged up tonight, too, you know, given the fact that coming in tonight, Devin Jackson, another one of those important players that defensive line, Pretty banged up himself. Weston Bryan now back in at quarterback. 
That's the hand to Chroma. Be careful here. He Ooh. shakes free. Here's Osmani Chroma again. Midfield, 40, 35, 30, down the sideline and brought down at the 16 yard line. And I know, I know that Chroma is getting everything, but I want you to watch 77 again. Watch 77 turn his guy. What a block, and then he just runs over that Houston County defender. I've got him for 71 yards on that carry alone. Man, he's special. <laughs> Again, I mean, he's he's probably 70% at this point with that calf. 10.35 in a game. Lee County needs a touchdown to tie it. We're in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. And there goes Honer, and Honer shakes free for a touchdown. And Lee County's a PAT away from tying it. Two plays from a fourth down stop, and we're tied. How about that? Second touchdown of the night for Braxton Honer. Wow. Moy's kick is good, and it is 35-35. We sat at 28-28 for most of the second half, and then suddenly both teams strike for quick scores. What a game. Good time here on a Friday night. Everybody enjoying it here in Warner Robins. Dang, where you get this car? You need to join the union. The union? Absolutely. Yes, you can get 10 of these. Union construction workers earn the highest wages with the best benefits and the most protection in the construction industry. Find your career in construction. Go to GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com and start your future today. Hendrick. Drive now. Pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown. What would happen with the children and myself? What would happen with the house? I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce, and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney. You need the best attorney, and that's going to be Meriwether and Tharp. Great teams are committed, focused on the details, and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. And we are back 35-35. That is our score. You see the Lee County offense fresh off the Braxton Honer rushing touchdown. Second touchdown of the night for Honer. Two plays, 78 yards. Of course, most of that set up by what Uswani Cromont did on the previous carry. I can guarantee you he's north of 200 now. Moy's kick is away. Fielded, returnable, and then a nice special teams tackle inside the 20. We've seen special teams tackles matter here. Not much doing that time for Porto Tarver. Tarver's a Georgia State commit, by the way, wide receiver. Roswell, big win tonight over Blessed Trinity. When I tell you those are neighbors, they yeah. could share a, a parking lot. I don't bet you there's two schools in the state closer I, than I Blessed not, Trinity and Roswell. Could not imagine they are. And then ironically, you know, they just played for the first time last year. I didn't, I didn't know that. There's the handoff. Lee County, for the most part, there to meet it. Yeah, they've, they've got a, they, they're dialed in on that play a little bit on first down. 
Cartersville gets the win over Calhoun, setting up a fun showdown on TV next week as Cass also gets a win against Woodland, too. That region is going to be something else. Let's see how it happens unfold. Yeah, we talk about the pound for pound depth of ooh, Region 1 6A because of Thomas County Central in addition to these two teams. You think about Cass and Hiram. Dalton now. Yeah. Cartersville, Calhoun. Yeah, I, you got to put that region up in its own classification, which is about anything. There's Talib again. Talib finds a little bit of a lane. He lowers his shoulder. My goodness. I'm telling you, man, it reminds me so much of Bryce Hicks. Yeah, it's a good comparison. He has no qualms about going as no, low as no, possible. No, he can run behind his pads. Houston County picking up the pace offensively here a little bit. Here comes that pressure. Now throwing, and Woodburn is there to the 25-yard line. Called the 26 officially. Big strike. So they've been running talent so much on first downs. Lee County almost a sellout blitz. And Houston County catches them in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Woodburn gets behind the defender. Great job to do just that. That ball was on the money. And you're bringing up a really good point. So you go to Talib on first down. You go to Talib on first down over and over and over again. And I don't know if it's an intentional setup or not, but you couldn't have set it up much better no. than that. And then Lee County's like, no, we're not doing that again. And you catch them in a one-on-one. -on -one. Great play call, but you got to execute it. And that was a great deep ball from A.J. Hill. 9-14 left to go in regulation. This one is anybody's game here right now. And obviously the Houston County crowd is as big as almost any we've seen all year long, but a great collection of folks traveled up from Leesburg, too. Yep. You know, that's the challenge down here in, like, the middle part of Georgia, South Georgia, is the size of the region is much bigger, and the travel yep. time is yep. much longer. Yep. And, listen, there's a lot of discussion on NIL. There's a lot of discussion on this meeting Monday with private schools. Are they going to be in their own separate, you know, bracket for playoffs? Uh, the one thing is... We know they're going to shrink the regions, so they're going to compress it down to six classifications, and that's going to help with things like that. And of course, you're also talking about the controversy potentially of what's going to happen to the private schools, you know, at the that is a, a very, 2A, and 3A a level. Very hot topic. Very hot topic. And it, there's no easy solutions, but nope. the complicated scenario of they may be in a region for scheduling and travel purposes, mm -hmm. but competing for a different state championship. Hill now will throw. Strike, but incomplete. Man, he kind of into double coverage there, trying to get the ball to Ricky Johnson. He 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 un unleashed that one. Now that was a little bit underthrown, but that's that's the that's one of the first balls I've seen him just to turn it loose like that tonight. It's almost like sometimes you see with a young pitcher the overthrow, where yeah. if you're going low, you may have a little bit of an overthrow. He may have slightly over. Tried to that aim one. that a little bit. Tell you what, with these two young players, these two young superstars that are juniors, Ball star. these Offense. two teams are going to be tough to deal with not only this year, but next year. Well, and it, obviously, this game is far from determined, but I mean, you have to give credit here to Houston County, the remarkable turnaround. They got blown out by Lee County a year got ago. Got blown out. Blown out by Lee County a year ago. They showed blitz, they backed off. Let's we'll see if they bring angry this time again. See if they check out of this. Hill. He's coming. Great pickup by yeah, Talib. Yeah, so far. But now he's going to have to rush. Now going to throw. End zone, and it's intercepted again. There's incomplete. Uh, incomplete. Uh, yep. McDowell came away with it. It would have been his second interception of the night, but they're going to say he was out of bounds. Yeah, for all the balls you've seen him throw away tonight, you want to see him throw this one away. He does a good job. Just get outside the pocket. He just lets this one float a little bit. That's a tough position to make That's that throw. That's a tough in. position. Yep, good, good call, call by the officials. Yep. Really good call by the officials. Yep. Right on it, too. That's that buzzword phrase, you know, the off platform. Where off you're... platform. All right, looking at third down now. This Lee County crowd, which is closer to where our press box is. Boy, they're making a bunch of noise, rattling the bleachers. 
and Houston County is going to call timeout. Yeah, big play here. Not a lot of plays you dialed up for third and 15. You may want to get 10 here and make it more manageable on that fourth and five. And you got to know that Jeremy Edwards is thinking, I got two downs right here. Don't have to get it all in one play. Let me take a quick moment to remind you about the uh, Legacy Reunion Earth, Wind and Fire alumni for an evening of monster grooves, high energy and danceable hits that combine jazz, R&B, disco and soul. It's Friday, October 20th at the historic Rome City Auditorium. You can get your uh, tickets online at www.romega.us slash tickets for more on that. There's also a QR code right there on your screen. One of the fun events taking place in Georgia's Rome this fall. One of the things that Jeremy Edwards has said a lot, said it to us this week, said it to Kaylee Manziel before the game, is that A.J. Hill has what he calls a pro mindset. Yes. So, I mean, the crowd is so loud right now on the Lee County side that, you know, right now it almost feels like you're in Leesburg. But Hill is not likely to be shaken by that or the moment itself. Yep. He completes 75% of his passes on the year. He'll throw to Johnson here on the screen. Johnson coming back. Tackled bumble, there the bumble, 25 bumble, yards. The ball bumble. come out. Yeah, they stripped Lee it. Lee County thinks they've got it. Ja'Cory White is the one that makes the tackle. And you see the ball Man. in the hands of of Leroy Jackson, the terrific defensive lineman, so but got a player down, but we've got to see that replay because it looked to me, Brandon, they tackled. Watch them come in and strip the ball. Yeah, White, who makes the tackle, is the one who's down. Watch right here. Watch 13 come in from the top. Now watch him spin around, see where the ball is when they come back around. That's a, that's that's out. That's out. Mm. That's out. Mm. 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 Now Lee County was on it when we came back to the camera view. Yeah. Now, we have a benefit that the officials don't sure, have. Now, sure. the state championship this year, these plays 100%. will be reviewable. But for regular season games, that that's not out. the case. So mm, mm. we're looking at a vantage point the officials simply don't have. See, the only chance he would have is his knee down. But I, he doesn't have control right there. See, the yeah. ball is messing. He doesn't have control of the ball. Yeah. I, unfortunately, he can't be saved by the oh, knee being down yeah. because he does not have control of the football. Yep. yep. Oof. So a break for Lee, I should say for Houston County, but it's fourth down nonetheless. Hill takes the snap. He's open. got time to throw. His man is open, and it's caught. First down inside the five-yard line. Ricardo Tarver. Great play call. Great play call. Tarver's had a quiet night, but he comes up huge there. See, they thought they were going to throw that bubble screen again out there. Two Lee County defenders jump that, and he releases instead of blocks. Snap! And A.J. Hill was lucky to get back on that. There's a phrase that a lot of young football fans like to use about play callers being in their bag. I believe Jeremy yeah, Edwards he, has been in his bag on this drive. He was in his drive. bag on that one, no doubt. We are in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. 7.30, about to go under in our fourth quarter. Hill looking toward the sideline. Second down, and he's going to be sacked, and the ball came free into the hands of Justin Tanksley. Wow. And that is a turnover for Lee County. Man, they get the ball back anyway. A couple of plays later. Great job by the Lee County defense. We're going to make this our game's key defensive stop presented by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. It was Jaden Corey oh. getting his seventh sack of the season. Man, watch him strip it, too. Good job of getting his arm around on the ball, knocking it loose. Right into the hands of Justin Tanksley. What a play by Lee County. 
Seven minutes now to drive for the lead. Houston County students blowing their vuvuzelas. Here is Chroma. Chroma is corralled. Still didn't go down man, hardly. Man. Homer on the steering, brought down by number 16, E.J. Nobles. Game of two brings up second and eight. So that's going to bring up second down. You know, you, you've seen Chroma in and out some tonight because He's been battling a little bit of an injury. You kind of wonder, are they in a situation now where they can keep him in for the entirety of this drive? It's yeah. not hot, obviously. No. Weston Bryan is your quarterback. 625. Hand off to Chroma. Oh, he is hit in the backfield. Wow. He's brought down by Nate Langham. Big man made a play when they needed him the most. And he came out of nowhere, Brandon, to make that tackle for loss. Jeremy Edwards said this week, Langham is hard to move. Man, what a play. But he showed you right there, he can move pretty well on his own. Maybe the biggest play defensively tonight for Houston County. Third down now. It's 11 after the last yardage. Whistle blows. I don't think anybody called timeout, though. Dean Fabrizio is working this fisher on the side. I don't know what he's. So the play stop, and the officials are now going over to the Houston County sideline. Are they unhappy with the Vuvuzelas? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that might be what Fabrizio is talking about. Like an artificial noisemaker? Yes, yeah. Um, I <laughs> I don't know how well the Vuvuzelas are coming in from our natural sound. I don't. They are loud in here, and this is from the World Cup from it was in South Africa, however many years ago that was. The instrument became famous, but apparently whatever it is is over now. Yeah. And now they're getting even louder. So there you see him blowing. The the House of <laughs> County fans are having a great time. Their student section is having a blast. Brian will throw deep, but it's over the head of his intended yeah. target. And good coverage, Darius Patterson. He said a nice night in coverage. Yeah. And he was all over Jaden Upshaw, the freshman that time. And Lee County is going to have to punt. Now, keep in mind, they've tried to fake the last two. My yeah. assumption is they will not attempt to fake this one. Talib is your deep man. We have not really seen him get off on the big punt return yet tonight. Well, the last two special teams plays by Lee County has not been great. Moy is pretty good at just That's keeping it away from him. He, it's a rugby style kick, kick, and he, I mean, great kick. Really you trust good him on that. You yeah, know what I mean, trust him a little bit there. Yeah, really good job. So, Houston County avoids the uh, trouble after the turnover, gets the football back, and. We are tied and coming down the stretch here on Peachtree TV. Come on, we're right there. Come on, baby. It's only what we need. Touchdown! Are your neighbors watching the same game? Yeah, my 5G home internet delays the game a bit, but you get used to it. Here, try these. I stole them from an airport. They're noise canceling earmuffs. Great! Solid! Greek salad? Exactly! Don't delay the game with T-Mobile 5G home internet. Get Xfinity internet for $20 a month for 12 months. Switch today. For more than a century, people have been getting in a Ford vehicle and getting out there, strengthening our communities. We believe what you do with your Ford vehicle is what makes it a Ford. Ford assembles more vehicles in America than any other manufacturer because we're all in on America. Now, get up to 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, plus up to 3,000 cash back on select Ford SUVs. 
In the nearly 150 seasons of the league, no team has hit more home runs than the 2023 Atlanta Braves. BigTimeBats.com has released these limited edition Atlanta home run record bats. These beautiful maple bats will feature the home run totals for each player and the final total for the team laser engraved onto the bat. The bats are individually numbered and sell for $139.95 each. Go to BigTimeBats.com and see the official home run bat collection. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 613, Electrify Your Career, Gordo's, Fiesta Every Day, Personal Touch Lawn Care, the smallest details make the biggest difference, Meriwether & Tharp, Meriwether & Tharp LLC, the Atlanta Divorce Team.com, R.S. Andrews, story after story, we deliver smiles. And by Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of Atlanta. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel. Rusty lets game this out for a second. Obviously explosive offense for Houston County. And he's going to get sacked. A.J. Hill, two straight offensive plays resulting in a sack. Entire host of Trojan defenders in on that. Leroy Jackson probably leading the way there first. The question I was going to ask you as we see the uh, sack again is, if you're Houston County, do you care about time here or do you no. just want to try to score? For score, and right now they're having a hard time blocking them up front. And this Lee County defensive line is starting to establish itself. Not giving up that first down where the, uh, most of the night with Talop was getting three and four pop. Now you're third and 17 that quick. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Jackson, who was kind of in on the last sack, and, you know, you go back to uh, Corey, who had the previous sack. And that's 14 total sacks between them on yep. the season. Yep. So this is a very effective Lee County pass rush. Now third and long for Hill. See if they throw a screen up top. They got trips. They've hit Woodburn on this a couple of times. Something safe because they're coming. Fake and they're coming for sure. Hill goes down, down again. And that is Leroy Jackson again. I'm telling you, this Lee County defensive line has taken this game over in the last four or five minutes. Watch Jackson one-on-one -on -one right here. Just push his wow, guy. He splits strong. the double team. Long arms that guy, runs him down, sack. And you see why North Carolina just offered him. If I were him, I'd put that play on his huddle film. They probably don't have to because it's North Carolina defensive line coach is standing right there. But, yeah, that would probably would only know highlight. Film. Yes. Interesting there. They call timeout. Lee County calls timeout. Okay. And and there was some confusion there. Special teams has been a little bit of an adventure. Yeah, but I mean, you're fourth and 24. Not really worried that they're going yeah. to, to fake that. Yeah, you know. You had a guy back deep. They've got a timeout left, so it's not going to be, I guess, yep. the most debilitating decision. But like you said, you know, in a situation like that, you hate to use one. You see <laughs> the, the young bucks. Yeah, you love that. That's a pretty sweet mullet there in the middle. It really is. That is a, he's put a lot of work into that. They got a perm in the back? Yeah, those guys are having a good time. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> Of course, you go to Lee County now, you see the facilities, and oh, so man. much of that Dean Fabrizio has had so much influence over, and the amazing growth of that program from, you know, where it was before he got there, obviously, you know, raising it to a state championship level. He had a long streak. Of, I think it was five region championships in a row at one yep. point in time. Yep. Um, and, you know, big, massive facilities. He's, you know, clearly created that into a football power here in Georgia. And Jeremy Edwards in his second year, hope to travel a similar path. Here is Collier in the punt return. And he's still on his feet. Finally going to go down around the 22-yard line. And Devin, D1 Collier, one of the most fun nicknames you're ever going to see. And Collier gave Lee County the explosive play and special teams have been looking for. And guess why you call timeout and you set up a return? And Good Collier, point. man. Got a, got a House and County player down as well. Okay, let's see this. So when Lee County gets it, it's going to be good field position after the call your punt return. We've got a Houston County player down. I 
have not yet been able to identify who that is. Looks like it's a right leg perhaps being looked at here. Can't tell much more than that here right now. Okay, yeah, so that's Gavin Kirpus, who's a uh, long snapper. Yeah, that's, that's your long snapper. That's also been your Wildcat quarterback. Man, that's tough there because you had a tight end go out earlier this week. He was playing tight end as well. Yeah, he got a touchdown catch as a tight end earlier tonight, too. So he's had his fingerprints on a lot of this game and sort of want to make any kind of diagnosis here, but he certainly appears to be in a pretty good bit of pain right there. So let's watch what happens at long snapper for Houston County with Kirpus out. He's played a really good football game tonight. Of course, he could be okay, too. Let's yeah, keep in mind yeah. on that there as well. Big win, Newton beats Grayson. How about that? So Grayson last week gets the emotional shutout win against former coach Adam Carter with Lowndes coming into town. And Newton, who's as quiet as a mouse, undefeated. 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 Quiet as a mouse, undefeated. I-20 right there, undefeated. All right, so first and 10 from the 23. Brian and Chroma just shared an interesting moment. Hand to Chroma. There's a little bit of an embrace between those two before that snap. So Houston County has two timeouts? That's what I have them as. Okay, two timeouts. Lee County quick back to the line. Hand to Chroma again. Chroma stutter steps. Then goes down. He's got three touchdowns in the night and broke a big run that set up the most recent Lee County touchdown a moment ago. Third down now. You got to think it's perhaps. Well, I don't want to say that too quick. Riker Moy has hit two field goals this year, and he's connected on one from 46 yards out. So he's perfect for PATs. It's a straight direct snap to Collier. Collier. Oh, man. Driving at the 15. Oh, man. Still driving. He, that's a Wildcat quarterback sweep, basically, with him. This is going to be real close. Let's see this here. Him, him get folded up right here. Yeah, so he's going to be still a little bit short. But I really call it. We're in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. All right, so you want to watch the ball here. They don't get you to jump off sides. And right, then so they're going to keep the offense out on fourth down. My quarterback's 240 pounds, too. 90 seconds to go. Brian to Chroma. Chroma fights. For the first down, and he's inside the 10-yard line. And you also got one of the top tailbacks in the country. Sometimes it is as simple as that. And Collier lost his helmet again. He's going to come out. <laughs> That's our game's key first down, presented by the Atlanta Falcons. And you see a nice look there at Chroma. Great block by 48. Well, he's well. got the full repertoire as a running back, doesn't he? The yep. power inside, the yep. speed, the elusiveness. Strong, man. One of the things that Dean Fabrizio said is he loves the way he's grown into being more of a complete back this year, becoming a better blocker. We haven't seen the pass catching element as much tonight. He has one reception tonight, but that's been a big part of really the Lee County offense here this year. They've thrown to him a lot more than they have before. By the way, speaking of the Atlanta Falcons, who brought that key first down to you, best of luck to them in London here this weekend. Yes, big one, man. It's a big game. I tell you what, it makes me feel better after watching the Lions last night. All right, that's exactly they right. Beat the brakes off of Green Bay at Lambeau. Our intrepid producer, producer Roddy uh, White, also uh, pointing out to us that the game will be 9:30 in the morning, and it's on the on ESPN Sunday. Plus app. So, well, there you go. Be getting the text. I'll be, I'll be reading about that in the paper. There'll be a lot of people. I'll, I'll be, be a lot of people asking, Where's, "What channel the Falcons on?" All right. First and goal now after the Chroma run. Do you just give it to him four times? No doubt. I mean, you got to stop. I will say that seven is, is, a, is a threat as well, but they're going to have to tackle 32 for me. They're looking to the sidelines. 
Yeah, 15 seconds, still plenty of time to make a change. Can they keep it without giving it back to Houston County? Let's see. It is Chroma. Chroma dragging down. Oh, my this. gosh. He stayed on his feet. Oh, my good. Are you kidding me? Fourth touchdown of the night. How did he even get through there? And I'll say this. That might be Houston County's only chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I do exactly know what you mean. We had just said when they give it back and what a run. What a run. How did he get through this? That right there, you like they're thinking they so were they trying, were trying to, to tackle it from the ball, him, yeah. trying to tackle the ball. So which I, get I don't it. know if they're thinking this all the way through, but it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. At best you get the turnover, at worst yeah. you get the ball back. And you got and you got a minute eleven. And you've got a timeout left. Because I think that Dean Fabrizio would have probably been content yeah, just to ball, keep trying it yes. and keep trying it yes. keep trying it and give himself four cracks at it. I will tell you that Patterson, Darius Patterson, who's had a terrific night in pass coverage tonight, uh, apparently a little bit banged up on that. This extra point's going to matter here. Riker Moy has not missed all season long. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. Oh, man. Weston Bryan is the holder. The kick is good. So it's 42-35, and there are 70 seconds left in regulation. Yep. And this Houston County team that has averaged 50 points per game Scored 41 last week against a hated rival, Warner Robins, a perennial state championship contender. They'll now drive for what would be the biggest touchdown of their season thus far if they can put it through here. And, of course, we're excited about what's going to happen for us next week, the debut of the brand-new Peachtree Sports Network. Cass gets Cartersville. Both teams, by the way, won tonight. Man. Drive for the GHSA state title on the brand-new Peachtree Sports Network. It's WPCH. That's... 17.2, 245 on cable there in the Atlanta area. Atlanta News First out, but coming soon across the entirety of the state. Yeah, it's going to be a big deal. Uh, that's that's uh, that's a game changer in high school sports, not just football in the state of Georgia. I know Connor Foster is probably at Cartersville right now, and he might be having a beverage after that win tonight. Steve Gates, big win over Woodland. So. The Battle of Bartow County next week, two big-time rivalries. Well earned. Now, we've seen good special teams tackles from Lee County here lately. Let's see if they can get another one. That's going to be returnable for Tarver. Tarver Great and point. another one. Lee County Great has made job. big tackles on kick returns here tonight, and that may have been the biggest of them all. Wow. Really good job that time. To get in there and make that tackle by Lee County. Number 24. Yeah, it's Demario Hare. Watch him. Good job right there. Covering. And he knew it, too. Hey, you've got to make them now. He gotta, knew it, too. They got to go 80, what, 85? Now, you're going to watch. They want to work the sidelines in this. You want to work the sidelines, get Can out of bounds. Can you block them up front, though? Yeah, it's going to be quick timing right now for a minute. They're going to play. They're going to play uh, too deep. Dean Fabrizio is not happy about something. He was sidebarring with one of the officials, and now that official. Fabrizio's been. He, may, he works them now. He's been animated. He, he works them. I mean, he is five yards on the field. <laughs> he, he, just high right there. he just high five the assistant coach. All right, so Houston County's obviously going to work the sidelines right here and try to get up the field a little bit. The middle of the field is still in play with a timeout. Woodburn, who's had a big night, the slot receiver on the right side of the formation. That's going to be kind of the top part of your screen. A.J. Hill fakes the handoff. Hill, time, throws it. That's Woodburn pass caught 23-yard line. Got to get up on the Give ball. Give him 11 and yep. move the chains. The clock going to stop. Yep, clock, clock stops stop. for the first down. Yep. But they're going to wind it back up now. Low snap for Hill, but he takes care of it. Now he got to hurry. 
almost fell down. Time ticking. Now throws off his back foot. Be careful here. Tarver is there. It's out of bounds. Yep. That's uh, McDowell who had the cover. Excuse me, that's Lasaya Jackson again with the cover. I think McDowell and Jackson both were kind of in the same vicinity. The Lee County second, Derry, I know they've given up, you know, 35 points, but they've had a pretty good night tonight. Yeah, they made some plays, but they had to. All right, so second down now, 44 seconds. Plenty of time, changing the play. 15 yeah. seconds on the clock. Clock has stopped. Play cl uh, the game clock has stopped after the incompletion. Play clock now under 10. Lee County coming again, and down he goes. Time Leroy Jackson, another sack. And that was massive. And that's going to force Houston County to call its final timeout. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 91 has been a problem. 91 has taken this game over. Look at this, just runs right through him. Tackle in front of him. I mean, you can't be more of a player of the game than Cromaw has been tonight, but Jackson's made quite a push here both, late. Both of those two are gonna be. He's made quite a push here late. You can read my text I just sent. 32 and 91, if this finishes off this way, you're gonna see them uh, down in the corner and end zone with Kaylee. So you're 32 seconds. You've got three Division I level wide receivers and a elite, you know, top-rated national junior quarterback here. So this Houston County offense is more than capable of making up this long ground here. Yeah, I want to see him work the sideline a little more. I mean, he's having to drop back and wait on these long routes. I mean, they're kind of giving you 10, 15 at a time. Kind of take that for a second and will Lee County go softer here given down in distance? Yes. And you see that right there. You see how deep the safeties are? They got three, they got four. They're playing quarters, four deep. They're gonna work the sideline here. Probably. Hill gonna have to hurry again. And he goes down in the end zone. Yep. Can't take that one. And Lee County has bowed its back defensively. And it looks like. They're in position to win here on the road. Yeah, you got to turn it loose because they're going to get to you. It was Justin Tanksley who actually gets credit for the sack. No, excuse me. That's Collier. That's yep. Collier. Excuse Collier, me. Yep. Yeah, Devin Collier. Man, what a fourth quarter for the Lee County defense. I'm telling you now, Brennan, they had a stop on that fourth and two. They changed the whole game. Let's see our play of the game here presented by HendrickCars.com. And it's Usmani Kroma on his fourth touchdown of the night. And Lee County. It'll be a lot easier ride to Leesburg. HendricksCars.com, of course, brings it to you. Looks right now like they're going to come on the road and get an incredible win in a Huge. raucous environment against an undefeated Houston County team who, by the way, they're going to still be heard from plenty. If this score ends the way it is right now, they're going to still be heard from plenty. Oh, man. But I, what a win for Lee County. Both of these football, both of these football teams are a threat to play all the way to the end on side. Going to try the onside kick. Bounces up and fielded easily there. Was that Cromont that fielded that? I think it was, yeah. <laughs> He's done everything. Tonight. He really has. He has done it all tonight. And you see. You got a cramp. Yeah, that's Ja'Cory White. So keep in mind, in this region, the other team of note right now is a top five ranked Thomas County Central team. Sir. So. Justin Rogers, Dave Winden, coach of staff over there doing a really good job. They are they are loaded as well, man. Also keep in mind in 6A a year ago, this region, region one, swept the first round. Yeah. Oh yeah. All of the region one entrance of the playoffs all won in round one. Man, this is so big. You just don't know where, you know, how this don't just does to the bracket. Well, these four teams from this region that make it, whoever they are, are gonna be tough outs again. 
And boy, you feel a shift, right? This season's really taking the change, right? We are in right region there. play now. It's, it's mean there something. is an energy to these games that is unmatched. And how about Lee County? As Rusty said a moment ago, that drive back to Leesburg, Leesburg a lot easier. is a lot more fun. They come on the road. They get the win against Houston County. What a game. By the way, we're going to stand by and in a moment give you a chance to hear from the victorious coach, Dean Fabrizio, with our Craig Sager Jr. And you know that's going to be a spirited interview. Coach Fabrizio has been so much fun to watch tonight. You see those Highway 96 shirts on the side of the Houston County folks. You know, we've obviously had a great time here tonight. Jeremy great Edwards time. deserves oh, so man. much credit for what he's Thank built you. this program into so quickly. Thank you so much to Houston County for hosting yeah. us. They have been absolutely tremendous to us, our staff at Peachtree TV, camera crew, yeah. everybody. This is a beautiful facility. They have great rolled fans. the red carpet out for us. I, I know I speak for you when I say we'll come down here to they Central no, Georgia no anytime you want no because doubt. this is the kind of high school football we love to do. Guarantee it is, too. There will be some important playoff games in this building in November. There indeed will. So we think both these teams have equated themselves admirably here tonight, but there can only be one winner. It is Lee County, a team that's no stranger to big region wins. The coach that makes it possible is Dean Fabrizio. He is standing by with Craig Sager Jr. Craig, take it away. All right, I'm here with Coach Fabrizio. Great win tonight. Talk away, you got talk about the way you guys closed out of this ball game, both sides of the football. Well, first off, you know, got a, Houston County's got a great football team. You know, I want to give them credit. Uh, you know, it was a great football game. Two great teams. What a great atmosphere. Just really proud of our players, the way they fought through this game uh, and got the win. Uh, you know, we told them they're gonna have to play four hard quarters. We told them they were gonna have to uh, keep their composure in the fire when the game got tough and do their job, and they did it in the fourth quarter tonight. Absolutely, and Houston County had some big conversions on fourth down, but in that fourth quarter, that defense did what you guys have been doing all season long, got to the quarterback, produced the sacks. Just talk about that pass rush and just the physicality they've shown this season. Well, we've got some good players up there, Leroy Jackson, Jaden Corey, Jay Sangry, and, uh, you know, they, they've got a great offense, Houston County, but those guys stepped up big in the fourth quarter when it was crunch time and got some big sacks there at the end. And then offensively, we've got to talk about the big performance, Chroma, did it all tonight, caught the ball, big runs through, throughout it. Talk about his performance, just what he showed. Well, Usmani, you know, he's, he was only about 75%. He's been battling a, a strained calf all week. Uh, heck, he could barely walk this morning, but we got it rolled out. Our trainer does a great job, and there was no way we were keeping him out of this game. But, you know, even Usmani Chrome at 75% is better than almost everybody at 100. Yeah, what would you think of that last touchdown run he had? Well, it's just tremendous. I was worried he scored too quick, though, and left a minute left. I was hoping we'd take a little more time off, but uh, what a great win. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Coach. And we'll be back with our players of the game. Thank you. Yankee Wawa. Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life, you get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. I've used R.S. Andrews 15 years. Purchase two heating and air systems, so I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come, it's fixed. And I appreciate Andrews' commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you. Than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Okay, I have your back, you have my back, we're going to do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college, where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? Welcome back to the Tailgate Show presented by JordanConstructionCareers.com. I'm with the creative rate offensive player of the game, Usman Kroma, and also the defensive player of the game, Leroy Jackson. 
Usman, tell me a little bit, man, about that play right towards the end, pretty much the game, sealing uh, rushing touchdown. You are powering through people. You're carrying multiple people, and you score a touchdown. What's going through your head on that play? Coach said go score. You got to do what Coach said at all times. So I did what he said, what he asked. <laughs> <laughs> and then Leroy, walk me through the end of that game. Your defensive line starts to heat up, right? Mm -hmm. You had multiple tackles, at least two and a half, I counted. Boy, Rob. What were you seeing out there? Well, basically, like Usmani said, coach said, go make a play. He said, be you. So I, that's what I did. 100%. And then, Usman, I know you were kind of banged up coming into the game. So what powered you through everything? And how were you able to just do it and have a, a big night tonight? Uh, I prayed before I got on the field. I'm Muslim. So I prayed right there. And I feel like uh, God got me through it because I was feeling a little, a little hurt at the beginning and stuff like that. But I guess the, this is power of God. He put me through that. I ain't even cut. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to uh, give it to Randy on behalf of GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com for the presentation of the Robbie Hunter MVP Award. Usman, on behalf of GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com and our affiliated unions, our brother and sister members, we're proud to give you the Robbie Hunter MVP Award. Thank you so much. Good job. Man. Hopefully. Another one. Hey, that look good. <laughs> hey, okay. it's hard. Well, guys, this is the Tailgate Show. We're going to go ahead and send it to break. We'll be back on the other side for the wrap-up with Kaylee and Craig. Around ADHD, there's tremendous ignorance. Most people are not aware of the positives. Can't sit still, disorganized, Annoying. can't focus, lazy, lazy, stupid. You can't make it. You never listen, you don't clean your room. It's a super skill set. Our motto has always been, we never leave anyone behind. The thing about philanthropy is you're always looking about what more you can do. But if you have ambition and you have heart and you want people to be saved and to have a better life, then you don't stop. The Rocket Fund takes all of the work that we're doing all over the world for vulnerable communities and looks at the most effective ways to get resources to them, to get services to them. But well, we haven't done it on our own. We've done it with collaboration, especially over the last few years. And that's the enjoyable part. Together, you have more impact. We have been able to reach over 100 million people impacted and affected and at risk of HIV. We know how to get to these people, but we have to be consistent. What we mustn't do, and what the Rocket Fund is about, is we mustn't take our foot off the accelerator. If we come together and love people and accept them for who they are, what they are, then the world would be so much better. And welcome back to the Tailgate Show, brought to you by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. I'm Kaylee Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Sager. Craig, I think that it's no question this is by far the best game that we've seen all year long. How exciting was it to just have a close-up matchup like this? It was awesome, and I think each half was exciting in its own right. I mean, the first half is 28-28. Both offenses are going off, and then we saw the defenses really get after it in the second half. And then just credit to Lee County, they closed it out really strong in that fourth quarter, but all the fourth down conversions Houston County made. I mean, it was such a good football game. Your heart breaks for them losing a tough home one to open the region. But as we, we said earlier, region one is going to give everyone serious trouble this year. Yeah, I think regardless of the outcome, 6A football has something to be proud of tonight. Both of these teams, we're going to see them in the playoffs. I have full confidence that both of them are going to go far, and we saw a star tonight. I've never seen a player like Usman Kroma. He is the real deal. What did you see out of him that you liked? I mean, he made it look so easy, and just the physicality, the last touchdown was unbelievable. They knew he was going to get the football and then just he drug the entire defense into it to cap just one of the best individual performances I've seen. And then Coach Fabrizio said he's nursing a, a calf injury. He's about 75%. That's scary to think, and he's only a junior. But 
his body of work so far, just last season, this season, I mean, he has been one of the most uh, valuable players in the state for sure. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the scores from across the state tonight. We had some really close ones at the half, so excited to bring this to you guys. All right, wow, we've already got some close ones on the board. Oconee County over Hebron Christian, 29-21. at And then Newton beating Grayson, 31-27. Newton remains undefeated. I think this is their first 6-0 start in this century. Oh, it's unbelievable. And we talked about how tough that region is going to be to open up with a win over Grayson. What a confidence boost. Newton's also beaten Westlake this season. Huge victory right there. They made some big plays. They fell behind in it, got the win. And then Archer getting a big statement win over Brookwood. We know how tough it was last year. I think two and eight finish. That is a great sign for them opening that region. Looking at our next set of scores, Parkview bouncing back over their loss to Mill Creek last week. Come back this week, beat South Quinnette in a statement game. Buford shuts out call until Buford remains perfect on the year. Yeah, that Buford defense, they've gotten done every single week. And then the offensive production, Collins Hill has an unbelievable defensive front. Looks like Buford's offense uh, got going tonight. And then let's look at the rest of Region 1. Northside Warner Robins getting the win over Tiff County. And then Thomas County Central, the highest ranked team right now. They look really good. Moving on to our next set of scores, Roswell and Blessed Trinity, a game that we didn't get to touch on in the half, but always a good rivalry. Ultimately, Roswell comes out on top, 29-19. And then, like we said before, Gainesville, they're just on a roll. Um, it's amazing what Josh Niblett has done with that program, and it's really showing. Yeah, that offense is scary. The addition of Gavin Hall and then just how good they are with the slants, getting everyone involved. They are clicking on all cylinders. GAC, I'm interested to see what they're going to do in 5A this year. They've taken a big step forward. And then the Ola Warner Robins game, absolutely crazy finish. Looks like Warner Robins, I think, went for that two-point conversion at the end. That is a big win. A heartbreaker for Ola, just their first loss of the season. But that's got to be a positive sign just with their playoffs, playoff aspirations. Moving forward at half, Calhoun was up on Cartersville. Cartersville comes back, I believe, in the final minutes of the game, which is so exciting because we're going to get the opportunity to see them next week, along with the team underneath them, Cass, who defeated Woodland tonight. Excited to have that Cass-Cartersville matchup next week, Craig. Yep. First, Hiram, that was a big comeback win over Dalton as well. But with Cartersville and Calhoun, I think Calhoun was up 17 nothing. Definitely had a two-score lead, but it's like Cartersville so explosive. Calhoun, that you've got to be aggressive still. You can't yeah. just play to lose. And then Cartersville, they strike the plays, come away with a comeback victory the second year in a row. We saw what happened last year, too. But a big result heading into next week against Cass, who looked good in that second half against Woodland. And moving on, Benedictine over New Hampstead, 39-31, an absolute nail-biter. And, then, I mean, we have a lot of great scores on this game. It seemed that um, we see Westminster beating Holy Innocence, 93 low-scoring games, some good defenses there. What else do you see? Yeah, these are all 4A games right here. And I think 4A is getting more and more interesting by the week. You can see the result with Central Carroll, 35-21 over Cedartown. They're undefeated. Westminster beating Holy Innocence, giving them their first loss. Trinity Christian knocking off Stars Mill, who beat Troop last week. And then look at Region 3. Benedictine gets a narrow win over New Hampstead. And you still got Wayne County and Burke County in that region. Burke County's undefeated. They've had some big results. And putting up 37 points on that Wayne County defense is a big deal. And then North Oconee over North Hall, 52 to 7. And then Athlin County over Pierce County in a really close game, 17 14. What do you think, Craig? Yeah, there's a big top 10 matchup. Uh, I think Lumpkin County, a great win over a solid Wesleyan team. Wesleyan was coming off the big win over Gilmer. I believe Lumpkin County is still undefeated. And then that Athlin County Pierce County game, you know that one was filled with defense, two state title contenders in 3A. Well, that wraps up our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta tonight. I know that we mentioned it a few moments ago, but we will be at Cartersville next week to see Cass and Cartersville. What can we expect out of that matchup? Speed. Yeah. Speed, speed, speed. All the playmakers Cartersville has, I and mean, we've already seen Cass, so I think it's going to be really exciting. 
Well, that will be on Peachtree Sports Network. In case you haven't already heard the news, there it is right there. Shout out to IJ Rosenberg for making that happen. We will be right back here next Friday at 8 p.m. It's a matchup you are not going to want to miss. So from myself, Craig Sager, Brandon Adams, Rusty Mansell, IJ Rosenberg, Roddy White, and so many others, we wish you all good night. We will see you right back here next Friday. Enjoy some college football tomorrow. You deserve it. A lot can happen in the morning, and you better know before you go. With the First Alert Weather Team on Atlanta News First. Our morning go team gets you ready for everything. From the bus stop to breaking traffic, we'll get you around.